Spirit of the Living God, we submit ourselves to you and we ask that you will teach us, help us to understand the kingdom and help us to access the mysteries that come with this kingdom and help us to demonstrate the reality of the life, the power, the grace of God that is resident within us. We give you all the praise tonight. We will never be the same. Our hearts are open. We never get familiar with your presence. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Before I begin tonight, I just want us to take a minute and just thank the Lord for the manifest miracles, signs and wonders that He's doing through us, among us. Can we just lift up our voices in one minute and say, Lord, we are not ungrateful people. We thank you. All who are connected with us, to us, around, following us online, join us to lift our voices and tell Him thank you. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we acknowledge you as a doer of all things, working by your Spirit. You only use men, but it never comes from men. We acknowledge you before the entire world, and we declare that you are the wisdom behind the results that we command. You are the Lord of the outcomes. You are the Lord of every good thing that we celebrate in this place. So Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, we are to start a series on the Holy Spirit, but that will be next week. I course of the week I had a very serious body. We're still going to be on the series, but we just shift it one week. And um, I think that there is a lot we need to learn about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, and how to walk in the anointing. It's not enough to just have the Spirit of God. We must know how to be demonstrators of that power. But God had put something very strong in my heart. And um, I trust God that will be as brief as possible tonight so that we can pray. Um, for me, when it came, it was very, very serious. And I think that is worth considering. We are going to be praying. I'm teaching tonight on dominion over curses. Dominion over curses. Dominion over curses. Thank you, Jesus. Dominion over curses. Any aspect of the kingdom life that you do not have sufficient understanding of, please listen carefully, you will always experience the reign of darkness in that area. The Bible calls part of the cadres of the demonic kingdom, there is a class of spirits called the rulers of darkness. That means their dominion is on the strength of the absence of light or an inaccurate understanding on how to apply that light. You know, misunderstanding and ignorance are the same thing in the realm of the spirit. One who is a possessor of light but cannot apply it adequately and one who is barren of that light, both of them are destined to have the same outcome. So it's not enough to be possessors of light we must also be possessors of understanding. The system in the kingdom 
by which we apply this truth. You will be learning a lot this night. And I trust that God will open our eyes. In the name of Jesus. In the course of this very brief teaching tonight, God is going to be opening our eyes. And we are going to be seeing a lot of things as it concerns our lives, our families, our destinies. But much more than the knowledge, God will hand to us the keys that will not only help us to rise above it, but help the people in our families to rise above it. Praise the Lord. If I look at the baby that Shalhoma is holding and I call that baby an adult, I can argue based on whatever scientific fact. I can choose to even say she's not holding a baby. Whether I decide based on my perception to assume she's not holding a baby or not, the truth remains the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible says, for we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. There are certain realities as far as our work with God and our work in the kingdom is concerned that if we do not pay attention to and sustain the grace to be able to bring those things under the feet of Jesus, we will live absolutely defeated lives. And one of it is what I'm going to be teaching you tonight. Dominion over curses. Lamentations chapter 5 verse 7. Very interesting scripture. Please give us that scripture. Lamentations chapter 5 verse 7. I want us to read it as loud and clear if you are a child of God. Ready? One to read. One more time. Stop. What does it mean and they are not? They are what? That means they have left the scene. Something started with them and their presence departed from the scene. But whatever that something is, the Bible says, and we have done what? The word born there is the word inherited. Our fathers have seen and are not. It was only fair that whatever trouble will go with them, but the Bible says we have borne their iniquity. I hope you know the Bible says all scripture was inspired of the Holy Ghost. Holy men wrote, right? As they were moved by the Spirit. The second scripture I want us to look at is Proverbs 26 verse 2. And then we'll begin to establish a few things. Proverbs 26 verse 2. I want us to read one to read. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, read please. So the cause, causeless. <sighs> Look, look at this. This, this. I'm already laughing because I don't know how many of you went to school, but I think that this was written in basic English. So the cause, causeless, shall not come. In other words, if it comes, there is a cause. The condition for it not being there is that nothing caused it. That means the presence of any kind of predicament is a sign that it was intentionally initiated. The Bible says there is a law, and this is a law, that the, a cause, causeless, shall not come. It didn't say shall not stand. It will never even manifest in the first place. So the fact that it was able to appear in the scene of your destiny, regardless of what caused it, this law was properly obeyed. For it to find expression. It says a cause. Causeless. Shall not stand. It shall not come. There are so many believers. Who do not understand the laws of the kingdom. And the systems of God. Like we have been discussing here. 
this is part of accessing spiritual intelligence and um, we confess so many things we do not understand in the body of Christ and we are largely victims of situations and circumstances there are so many people who do not even believe that there is such a phenomenon in the dealings of men in the earth called a system where men can experience what the Bible calls a cause the word sounds insulting the word sounds antichrist the word sounds degrading but it's interesting to know that the first person who used it in the Bible was God the first person to reveal to us that there is a possibility that a man's life can be programmed to experience woes was not even Satan it was God Almighty now think about this God himself is using something are we believers ah look at you looking at me as if you left your Bible one year ago is it not in your Bible when man fell the Bible says and the Lord God had the voice I mean and they had the voice of the Lord walking in the cool of the day correct and he came and said Adam where are thou and Adam said, I heard thy voice, but I hid because I was naked. He said, who told you you were naked? Then he said, the woman. This madam you have kept close to me, did this and that and that. And because of her, I got into trouble. Woman, what is this that you have done? She said, the serpent. And he turned to the serpent. And the Bible clearly, clearly tells us, number one, the serpent was caused. That he would crawl on his belly and he shall feed upon the dust of the earth. Correct? Then God turned to the woman and made another pronouncement of pain in childbirth. Then God turned to the earth, innocent earth, and said, Cause are you for the sake of the man. Thorns and thistles shall begin to come out and in the sweat of thy brow. That's the mystery of hardship. God, using that same statement. The second experience was with a man called Cain. When Cain killed his brother, and then God called on Cain, where is your brother? He said, am I my brother's keeper? And God said that the blood of the brother crieth from the earth. And then he caused Cain. Correct? And when he listed those causes, a fugitive and a vagabond shall you be? And Cain turned and even negotiated. Remember in one of our teachings we explained that. And he said, no, 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 no. Whoever sees me, whoever sees me, whether he has no business killing me or not, something upon me will force him to want to kill me. And God said, all right, I will put a mark. Without that mark, anyone can kill you so it's not about who kills it's about what is making them want to kill you listen carefully please follow me tonight you are going to learn a lot a cause causeless shall not stand it's like saying every time you see water in this bottle it was intentionally put it cannot just appear write this down what is a cause ah Looked around and suddenly realized that you've been so good to me. Your mercy is everlasting, undeniable. Oh, well. Oh, oh, oh. Who am I that you are? Who am I that you hear my cry when I call you? Who am I that you are my love? Who am I? You're the source of my strength, not you. The strength of my life, not you. My hope and my joy, my confidence. 
You're the source of my strength. The strength of my life. My hope and my joy. My confidence. means the operation of a course cannot be studied intellectually. You must be able to study from the standpoint of the realm of the spirit. A course is a mystery. The second thing I want you to know about a course is that a course is a spiritual force. A course, listen carefully, is a spiritual force. A cause is a spiritual force. Are we together? Number three. A cause has magnetic characteristics. Like you talk in magnetism. An attracting power. It can attract certain things to its victim. I'm taking out time to help you understand this. Let's take it very carefully tonight. A cause is a mystery. A cause is a spiritual force. Then a cause is magnetic. It has an attracting power. Number four. A cause is always negative in its manifestation. A cause is always negative in its manifestation. There's no such thing as positive cause. No. What is a cause? A cause is an invocation. A cause is an invocation. Comma. A programming. A cause is an invocation a programming that is designed to attract woes and calamities to the life of its victim a cause is a what? An invocation, a programming that is designed to attract woes and calamities. Pay attention and listen carefully. In the life of its victim. It always has negative effects on the life of its victim. A cause can be made manifest in the life of a person through utterances. Let's be very fast. Utterances and pronouncements. Utterances and pronouncements. The Bible did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that utterances and pronouncements have prophetic implications. Whether from the positive dimension or the negative dimension, every time an utterance is made, the Bible tells us it has an effect that is supported from the realm of the spirit. That every time I open my mouth to utter an utterance, the Bible tells us whether it was done in ignorance or it was done intelligently, that there is a support system in the realm of the spirit that helps to back the outcome of that pronouncement. So the Bible says, say not before an angel, I made a mistake.
causes can find expression through written words. This is largely seen in, not much of this is understood in Christianity. But when you study world religions, you find out that there are many religions that um, work like a legal system. They have from slates to books to mantras to manuals and all kinds of things. And all of these gadgets and these documents are a system. And whenever they are invoked in a certain dimension and a manner, they have capacity to program wars upon the life of the people. These are the basic ways that the Bible reveals to us that a cause can be communicated to an individual. Now, very quickly, what is the character of a cause? I'm being very, I'm, I'm talking tonight like a lecturer because I want us to pray and I really want everybody to understand this. It is easy to know that a territory, listen carefully, maybe let me change the word and call it a siege. Let me change the word and call it woes so that it will psychologically relate to you. But the name is a cause. If I change the name, it's only for your comfort, not to change the reality. It is called it calls. Are we together? Our idea of a cause is someone who offends you, then you make a pronouncement in anger and it brings a cause. No, no. It is that idea that makes us feel guilty. Say, no, 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 I didn't offend anybody. No. In this world, once you are alive, you have to find out what happened before you. Because you can be a victim of a story that predates your existence. Are we together now? It is easy to know that a personality, a family, a territory is under a cause. The first indication of the presence of a cause in a life and a family is patterns. Repetition of negative patterns that seem to veto the individual's prayer life, that seem to veto the individual's supposed spiritual activities. Please pay attention. Patterns. Patterns. The classic indication of curses and blessings in the Bible is patterns. Patterns. The same way, the same way you can know that a man, a place, an individual is blessed. There is a track record of frequent happenings regardless of the condition. Are we together? Yeah. So we look at the life of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the Israel of God, and we see a pattern. Everyone who spoke against them was judged by God. There was something upon them. Every time they violated his dictates, they were given to their enemies. It was a pattern. Patterns are very common in the lives of people. Now, we just pretend that they are not there. You see, let me tell you something. One of the major reasons why people do not rise in power and faith, listen carefully, is because of insincerity. When you want to approach spiritual things, you must be open-hearted and sincere. Are we together? Your heart must be broken and contrite. This pattern ranges from all kinds and it happens everywhere. There are patterns as far as finances are concerned. There are patterns as far as family lives are concerned. You turn and look around the average family in Africa. And you will know that there are patterns. Now pay attention and follow me to the end of the lecture. Don't be quick to just say no, 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 no. But it doesn't exist. I think I did something about it. A cause, causeless. If it still remains, the cause is there. A cause, causeless. A cause, causeless. If I have a boil in my hand and I go to doctor if i come to you and i have a boil in my hand you will tell me that this boil is a reaction it's an effect of something is that true the boil 
is showing that something is wrong. So the cause is not the failure. The failure is a message. The patterns are a message. They are not the cause. The cause is spiritual. The cause is an atmosphere. It's like a cloud. It's like a mantle that an individual can carry. Has capacity to break barriers. Has capacity to follow you. It can pursue a man. It can overtake a man. The Bible personifies a cause. In Deuteronomy 28, you see that he spoke to them. A list of blessings and then causes. He said it will pursue you and overtake you. Travel to London. Travel to UK. Travel to your village. Go to school. Marry. Be wherever it can follow you. It has that capacity. That limitless ability. A quality only given to spiritual things. A cause is not failure. A cause is not barrenness. A cause is not retrogression. All those things are messages. They are symbols that signify the presence of such an atmosphere upon a man. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? Joshua chapter 7. Let's look at it very quickly. Something interesting happened there. We read verse 1, then we jump to verse 10 to 12. Joshua chapter 7, verse 1, and then we'll jump to verse 10 to 12. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Kami, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of what? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against who? Who carried something? God was angry against help me now. There's a revelation I want to show you. Who participated in the loot? Help me. Did they loot as a congregation? Did he consult them to loot? The Bible says he smuggled an item that he was prohibited to carry. Correct? And then what happened? The anger of the Lord was kindled against who? Verse 10. And the Lord said unto Joshua, get thee up. Wherefore liest thou toss upon thy face? Because they were defeated. A small city defeated them. And Joshua went to God. Israel had who sinned? It never said Achan had sinned. We are Bible students. It never said Achan had sinned. It said Israel had sinned. And they have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even they, 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 they have even taken up their costing and have also stolen and dissembled also and they have put it even among their own stuff. Verse 12. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies but turned their backs before their enemies. Why? They started by taking something accost and in verse 12, they themselves were... One man whose eyes saw something and he said, no, I can't let this thing go like that. And he smuggled it quietly and put it in his pocket and God was watching. And God said, Israel, you have seen. And all of them, think of the innocent people that died in the war. They were all preparing. Oh, God will give us, I mean, if God gave us Jericho, what is AI? A small town. And in their midst, someone smuggled an item. And all of a sudden, they went to battlefield. Imagine them moving warriors. And they were utterly defeated. And Joshua, the embarrassment was too much. And he went back to God crying. And God said, stand up, please. This is not the issue of prayer. You need to understand. I need to give you understanding. Don't just lie down crying for nothing. He said, Israel has seen. They took something. And by this time, he said, they themselves were a cause. He said, neither will I be with you anymore. Except he destroyed the accursed from among you. The accursed was no longer a thing, but a person. Accursed is real. I wish they were not. I would have just told you I was joking. Let's be serious now. Accursed is real. Don't you see them in your family? I know you act like they are not there. 
Don't you see them around? Listen carefully. Don't you see them in the life of pastors? Don't you see them in the life of apostles, prophets, great people? A cause does not mean you are a sinner. Write it down. You have to get this. A sinner like one possessing the name. Listen, listen. I want to teach you something. Just pay attention. Whatever you don't understand, just keep following. A cause is not necessarily a symbol that an individual personally sinned against God. There are many families, there are many individuals carrying things in their lives that they can laugh around and pretend in church that this thing does not exist, it doesn't happen. But we are watching with our eyes. Remember the Bible says a cause causeless shall not come. Meaning if it comes, don't just probe the effect. What is the cause? Back to my boil example. So I have a boil and my hand is swollen. And I run to the doctor and say, doctor help me. And the doctor looks at it and smiles. And says, ah, your white blood cells are fighting something. Are we together now? They are fighting something. Or um, what they call this thing, fever sign. Ah, Pastor JT, good to see you. I didn't realize it was him. Hallelujah. And then fever sign. And then he tells me that that fever sign is a sign that there's war somewhere. When others are feeling cold, you are feeling hot. Correct? You try to stand in the sun, you start feeling cold again. You don't know what is wrong with you. That reaction is a sign that a war is going on somewhere. Whoever wins, you will soon know. If you don't recover, it's a sign you are not winning. And that means you must seek assistance. And the doctor says, okay, I need to introduce something in your life. And then he introduces something. And all of a sudden, things start changing. And you cannot enter your body to know whether you are winning. So you use the absence of that evidence as a sign that you are recovering. All of a sudden, listen, a boil that refused to go. You put rub. It refused to go. You put local herbs. Are we together? Palm oil. It refused to go. Immediately you know something is wrong. This is not... Sometimes it can even mock you and go and come out or come out somewhere else. The boy is saying, it doesn't matter where I come out. I can come out anywhere for as long as what is causing it is still there. But when the doctor explains to you, the issue is not the boil. The issue is an issue. Sometimes he will not even ask you to bust it. He introduces something to your system. Then a boil, causeless, starts drying. You watch it dry. And it disappears and within a week, you never believe anything is there. Then you now confirm by the absence of that thing that it is gone. So don't sit down and tell me, no boil is swelling. We are all watching it grow. He said, no boil. We are seeing it. We are not stupid. A cause, causeless, shall not stand. You may not appreciate this because somebody is paying your bills now. You may not appreciate this because no matter how careless you are, you don't sow, but somebody's harvest is paying for you. So you are thinking you are the one sowing. A day will come you will be exposed to a reality where you will now see that your life is dependent on the outcome of your understanding. There are patterns that should not happen to believers. If they are happening, something should be dealt with. It should not be ignored. It should be understood and dealt with. Brothers and sisters, hear me. I tell you the truth by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Causes are real. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. There are families today that all the men in that family never move forward. They never rise. They never become anything. Hey, Jimmy, the men do not have to be irresponsible. They are sincere people. Very sincere people. There are families where every month per year, somebody must die. Regardless of how sincere they are. Loving people. It can even be after a church service. On their way back, they die. After a prayer meeting, 
rattling in tongues for hours. You can't say they don't love God. There are families, if a man looks at you and says, I love you, even that man, what will happen to him that night? He will never repeat that statement again. Now, he doesn't know why. You too, you don't know why. You think the issue is, okay, am I too fat? Let me be on a diet. No. You are trying to rub palm oil on our boil. Remember our story. I know many hard-working men. Hey, Jimmy, they have been working in their 20s. Sincere, godly people. Till today, they are begging. There are people who start building 20 years. It has not reached LinkedIn level. No. Brothers and sisters, we are intelligent. How many graduates you see in a family? Seven graduates. The only employed person in that family is a driver. Are they so stupid? They are not lazy. They will tell you they are not lazy. Most times we think it's because they are unserious. And people erroneously say, just forget it's just that they are not hardworking. Please be careful. Some of you as you are sitting now, if you are to be sincere, you know things are not all right. There are families where you give birth to people, things happen. There are pastors, hey, Jimmy, they refuse to deal with these things and they get into ministry. Anointed. Remember my story. Born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. Working miracles, but still oppressed by demons. I went to people quietly and I said, what is wrong? They said, oh, don't worry. Man, let me tell you. I don't think there are few people here that quote scriptures more than me. The demons they respect it. Shocking. Call the name of Jesus, nothing happened. How do you call the name of Jesus on a crusade ground? And somebody is walking out of a crutch and you call it for your life and nothing happens. I knew I needed to understand something. Your victory starts when you are humble. When you have, you say, no, no, no. There has to be a puzzle to this equation. It can be God. Mysterious sicknesses. There are people today carrying hepatitis, A, B, and whatever. It's, they don't have, when you go to the hospital and say, I have hepatitis, they ask you who had it in your family. Even genetics support the reality of transgenerational transference. There is such a possibility. The fact that you look like your father should teach you something about the realm of the spirit. The fact that you look like your mother and your born again did not change your facial appearance is a spiritual reality. Something, listen, something should tell you that this thing is real. Now, you better trust the Holy Spirit. All of us men of God are not older than you by more than 20, 30 years. The Holy Spirit is an ancient spirit. It's God's own spirit. He was there when this thing started. Hallelujah. A curse causeless shall not stand. I have watched sincere people, a Jimmy, bound sincerely. There are pastors today as anointed as whatever. You look at them, you think it's the Holy Spirit. No growth, no increase. And it's not only ministry, it's a pattern. Anointed! Born again! Nothing happened. No growth, no increase. How many people have they thrown away from, they went to U.S. Just when they went, they went with complete papers. As soon as they were vetting people, one got missing. And you know that they didn't even hear, they said, look, let me explain to you. My papers were complete. They said, come and explain to your embassy in Nigeria. And they drive them down. What of all these devilish things that fly around people's body? Fibroid, lump, HIV, cancer. See it killing men now. Once a man is 45 years old, he starts getting afraid. Ask the doctors, they will tell you. Prostate cancer. Once people start getting to 45, 46, they are now, they are now afraid because of cancer. Once a lady is approaching 28, 29, even doctors start saying marry fast though, because any moment from now and every stranger will start growing. So once you are 30 and you are not married, 
they will tell you, look, there's no room to sharing God. Just hurry up and get all your children fast. How many do you plan to have? Five. You need at least ten years. Hurry up and catch up. It's nonsense. The devil is a liar this night. Patterns. How about barrenness? A trace of it. How about fruitfulness? But that not productive. You give birth to ten children, all of them are useless. There are patterns the ladies must get pregnant out of wedlock before the wedding. Now, they are innocent and the condition that leads to the pregnancy is the same thing that happened to someone else. They don't know themselves. But it happened. I have counseled people like that. Brothers and sisters, there is such a thing as that. And tonight, God wants to show us that there is a system in the kingdom where people can have dominion. It is not just about what Christ has done. It is that we can be alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in our heart. We have claimed things that we don't know anything about. Let me tell you something about ministry in Zaria that you do not know. I think it was you, Sam, I was talking to. Minis the lifespan of successful ministry in Zaria is three years. You are in ministry in Zaria. If you survive three years, you know the mystery of continuity. After three years, something must arise attempting to rubbish your life. A scandal. Are we together? One kind of failure. Something will just evolve out of nowhere. There are so many people, especially music artists, They've risen from Zaria. Men of God risen from Zaria. But you don't know where they are today. You see a musician just appears. And for six months he's been invited everywhere. And after that you just go still. Next. We are waiting for the next person. <laughs> there is a level the devil pegs men. And pegs their destiny. You never rise beyond a level. There are families... Is defined for as long as you oscillate within that ambient of relevance, it's okay. But try to cross it. That line will draw you back and say, Are you blind? Don't you see that there's a long line? Are we together? Men don't live beyond certain times. The moment you are 35, death comes. See, I saw this pattern in my own extended family. The only person in my father's family that is alive now is him and one of his sisters. I've shared it with you. Very sincere people. None of them died a good death. Mysterious sicknesses that will rubbish your life and none of them ever rose to certain levels. Some of your fathers are like that. They started working from 22. As it is now, if you send them 5,000, they will kneel down and say thank you. It's a cost. It's a cost. Some of you are in school as students, but they are calling you from home. Anything for this month, you say, mommy, just take it easy. We keep laughing and say there is nothing wrong. See, let me tell you. You don't deal with it, you marry, it follows you there. You don't deal with it, you... Because... As you are marrying, once you are standing with your necktie, two of you are bringing everything you represent and you move into the house. Do you know this is why people erroneously call people witches and wizards? It is because they are open to the prophetic, but because they do not have the accurate understanding of the word of God, they see the spirit that is behind that activity and mistaking it for the individual carrying it out. So they say, no, 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 no. And truly what they are saying is not a lie. They say your trouble started from the day this lady, one lady come. All of a sudden, you said you will marry her. You now got married. You were a millionaire. In five months, five months, you are looking for 10,000 to buy a new shoe. Mysterious things happen. Your first car got missing. The second car, police police caught it. The third car is somewhere else. Your truck capsided like that. The driver slept off. Listen. And your life is reduced back. And then you now go to a man of God. I'm not, I'm not talking against men of God. You know I love the body of Christ. But you go somewhere and then the man, genuine man of God, 
now looks and says, Ah! Who did you marry? Say, Tosi. Say, Thank God you are even still alive. It is just an example, darling. Just an example. Are we together now? Give me your hand. Now. Run away from me. You have to deny me now. Tosi. Be nice to me. Be a nice wife. Are we together? And then the man. You see, men will consult quietly. The one announced in public is the anger you see publicly. The man now returns home. Good evening, darling or honey. Say, see, let me tell you. I am throwing everything out of my life that is causing me failure. He stops eating your food because he believes that eating your food is why he is now having high blood pressure. And this lady is sincere. She loves God. Are we together now? And they cannot... Un Why will you call such a nice woman a witch? She may not be a witch, but she's connected to something that is causing that effect. Plus the one you are now bringing. We have not even talked about the one of the man. Hybrids of different formulas that are as a result of different spiritual things. And you find out that things don't work in people's lives. That's why in certain villages, they even apportion certain regions and tell you they are what? Cost. It doesn't happen in your village. Where they isolate a group of people and say, these people, whoever marries, will either die or something. And sincerely speaking, you go and marry out of bold face and say, love is love. Love is blind. And Jimmy said, marriage will open your eyes. You now go and get married. And find out that after the marriage, two weeks after the marriage, you are not hearing again. One month after the marriage, you can't walk again. You see that? Tell me why a man who has been working in the civil service for 30 years should not have up to 1 million in his account. How many children grew up with him? Two children, he's still poor. There are families win lottery, get anything that will still be poor. It has nothing to do with money. It's a system. Listen, the system of causes outlive those who cause it. It can outlive it. The primary purpose of a cause is to create a system for transgenerational allegiance. Transgenerational allegiance. Allegiance to deities. Ultimately an allegiance to Satan. A system to create transgenerational allegiance. Our grandmothers and great grandmothers, you hear of one woman giving birth to 14 children, never went to a hospital, no CS. Out of those 14 children, one was a set of twins, one was a set of triplets, and truly she gave birth to them in the midst of fire. And you still see her, a mother of 13 children, standing, her stomach is as straight as an arrow. No fibroid, no nothing. Why? Because before the delivery, there is a priest who asks the God and says, Remember, just like we agreed, we have been serving you, half of our guinea is hanging on the tree in respect to your demands. So, whatever, look upon that guinea and that goat that disappeared and please this woman. Now, all of a sudden, missionaries had passion but no intelligence. They came to Africa. Now, we love the missionaries, but don't forget that they were very limited. People say they died of malaria. Are, are, you, are you, with what you know now, was it malaria that really killed them? They didn't die of malaria. Malaria was the servant, like a tray that carried that charm. You just come in and all of a sudden you organize a crusade and say, stop worshipping this deity. 300 years old of worship and allegiance. You have the gods to bring the head, bring everything, burn it, <laughs> and an old woman is just looking at you and pitying you. Jesus says, Jesus says they leave you quietly because they know that ignorance can alienate a man from the life of God. And the moment you finish, first you die. All the followers die. The remaining return. And they say, look, this thing does not work. If I didn't know this, I would have been a failure all my life. 
Are we together? I have seen this thing happen. With all humility, I don't know how many of my extended people, especially from my paternal side, that I can look and say, this person is successful today. No. No. Causes can come directly from God. <laughs> directly from God. This is not the cause of the law. The cause of the law is not the, all the cause there is in the Bible. Directly from God. Number two, causes can be transgenerational. Products of ancestry. What we call ancestral causes. There is such a thing as ancestral causes. There is such a thing Number three, self-inflicted causes. Self-inflicted causes. There are programming that can come upon the lives of people, which is a product of self-infliction. The cause that we call the cause from God is what I also call a sinner's cause. Every sinner is under a cause. Everyone who has not acknowledged Jesus Christ, please hear me carefully, as his Lord and Savior, believe it or not, you are under a cause. You are under a cause. What is the cause? The dominion of evil perpetually remains above you. Is a cause. The moment you are not in Christ, you qualify for the very cause that is upon creation. That from dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. That tons and thistles shall come upon your ground, and with the, the sweat of your brow shall you feed. There is a cause that is upon creation. It cannot be taken away. You can only be exempted from it. Hear me please. That is the reason why the old earth will be purged. There is a reason why fire will purge this earth. There is a reality that is hanging upon this earth right now. Individuals born by default. In sin did my mother conceive me, he says. And you are a victim of it. Mortality is a cause that came with creation. There is such a possibility that a man can extend his life. You can access the reality of God's life. Failure, the cause. If you are not in Christ, listen, you are not in Christ, you qualify for the sinner's cause. It's not something bad. It's not even about what you did. It's a reality. God's own pronouncement upon creation as a result of men alienating his ways. And then I said number two, ancestral causes. Ancestral causes are products of violating the terms and agreements. Products of violating the terms and agreements that constituted the basis for mutual relationship between men and deities. There was such a provision in Africa as a continent where men fraternize with deities you see that in ancient Babylon you see that in Egypt the sun god Ra alongside thousands of other gods there was a very intelligent spiritual system of fraternity with them an agreement a covenant causes operate on legal grounds they don't operate by mistake they operate on legal grounds. There is a legal system in the kingdom. And don't forget, righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A system that God is obliged to honor. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. 
That's a liberty he's bringing to you tonight. Who can stand against my king? No one can. No one will. Oh. When you walk out of this, many of you will begin to see things change in your life in remarkable ways. Remarkable ways. Your prayer life will be so reduced to only worship because you will search around and see that there are no issues of concern again. There is such a possibility that a man can sit down, blessed on the left and on the right, and a fulgence of Zoe, the reality of God's life, practically at work in a man. And they look at you and say, Pastor Alpha, is it true that you came from Kogi State with this rest roundabout? The witches left you, they didn't leave me, I came out. I access the mystery because they are still there. If they left you, they will leave everybody there. You mean you come from this state and you are not a drunkard? No. The drunkenness is still there. I came out by a mystery of exemption. this house I built it at what age 27 where did you get the money from the only person that built a house here was the king of the village and he built it at 63 and you tell them well 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 welcome to a new order where intelligence creates reality do you know you would die and you say no no the same mystery that built the house without resistance keeps the house You had the testimony of the gentleman diagnosed of prostate cancer and all of a sudden is that prostate cancer? He would have died like a chicken. Then we will say, how can they all lie Sharia? You see what, how we convince ourselves? As if the will of God is a mystery. I know the thoughts that I think towards you said, the Lord, they are thoughts of good and not of evil. I don't know. Poverty does not look like good. Oppression does not look like good. No, sir. I counseled a couple as you They got married. Their wedding night, that's supposed to be a night of joy. Their very wedding night, a stranger walked physically to the woman and told her the same thing I did to your mother is what I would do to you. She, true story, she got pregnant according to what she told me. They were even happy. People were dancing. And in the night, this stranger came again. And this is all he did on her stomach. And she got up in the morning, bleeding profusely as if she would die. Machines don't diagnose causes. Machines cannot detect the presence of demons. They only detect the effect of their presence. We went to Ida. We always go there for Pastor Alpha's conference. And I remember one of the years when we traveled there, he took us on a tour and began to explain to us. We went to greet the king. The man refused to see us later on. And then we went somewhere and I saw far. Remember, Market Square. One Market Square that we went. I saw it there with my eyes. And people were passing. Whoever did the sacrifice just scattered it there. Witchcraft is real. If you see anybody rising, he is exempted or yet to be a victim. You hear what I said? Exempted or, or the devil is allowing their ignorance to keep them going while they laugh at others. I say it's because you don't know. The day will do you. He will scatter and rubbish you into pieces. 
there are people who are so irrelevant as far as their impact to hell is concerned. The devil will say, just allow them to be busy. They think it's because they have overcome. The day something about your life and ministry strikes hell, you will see the reaction immediately. You can be praying your childish prayer and the devil say, focus on those who are really, just leave that person. And you can convince yourself that because nothing has happened, you say, no, 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 I'm, I know what to say. I don't talk too much and things happen. The day that you ever say anything that strikes a chord in hell, suddenly strangers will come to you and say, don't do it again. Brothers and sisters, if you see men rise as if Satan does not exist, it's not, it's because they have accessed a mystery that immunes them. This is what I'm teaching you tonight. But to refuse that this does not exist is the beginning of deception. Beginning of deception. The Western world has been cheated in this area in a very big way. Because of advancement in medicine and advancement in all of these things. Oh, they leave it to all the spiritists and the, uh, the, the transcendental meditators. And all of them come. The nation of America, listen, their fathers understood this mystery. They walked in power. And when Satan found out that that whole generation had covenanted their lives to God, he left them and started growing with their children. He said, let's leave the fathers to die in the crusade ground. And he started growing with the children. And all the children came up with all kinds of things, you know. I mean, there's, if, if you are sick right now, you cough, ambulance is coming in five minutes. And so they don't believe it now. Look at the disaster happening in the Western world. Where people can kill themselves on YouTube. Shoot their children. Effects. They laughed at us in Africa before. That we are the ones who used to behave like that. You carry arrows. Now they have a reprobate mind. A generation successfully captured by hell. A cause is a mystery. A very big mystery. Hallelujah. How many beautiful ladies do you know? Beautiful, godly, God-fearing. The painful part is nobody has even come to say, Hi, my dear, you know you are a pretty lady. It's not a lie. You know what I'm saying. It's not a lie. How many parents went to all kinds of rivers and were dipped how many times to be pregnant? There is a system in the kingdom for exemption. But the first key is to acknowledge that there is such a reality on earth. A lot of people don't believe causes are real. It's foolish to believe sickness is real and poverty is real and not believe causes are real. The same boss brought all of them. How you know you are free from causes is that you also don't fall sick and you don't get poor. If you can still get poor as a believer, then make no mistakes to say cause cannot come. Are you getting what I'm saying? If as a believer I say, are you born again? Yes. Are you blessed? No. I'm poor. They say, okay, it's okay. With time it will change. Are you a believer? Yes. Are you sick? Oh, very sick. Are you a believer? Yes. Is there manipulation of that? No, 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 no. no. Are we not mocking ourselves? What is the difference between sickness, poverty and causes? If we do not get this, we will destroy ourselves. Every time I look at this next generation of Koinonia, our little ones, do you know what I tell myself? We have to run fast and correct everything that our parents could not correct in our lives before our children come. Correct it fast. I look at these dear ones and I'm imagining a time that they will now start growing and all of a sudden they will become victims. Our parents were sincere people, but they didn't know the way out. So many of us, we are in the middle of two generations, correcting the errors of the father and setting precedents for a new generation. It's worth enduring. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hear me. You are, you are hearing this message tonight. If you are a lady here, 
as you are hearing it, just, just know that you are, you are hearing it not just for yourself, but you are hearing it for a generation. You ignore what I'm saying. It will pain you to watch your children go through this. And you will remember you had a chance to be free. I cannot allow my children to go through this. Let me suffer it. Let me go through it. No matter what it will cost me, if I go through the delay, let it be that it's me that went through for them. So that these dear ones will move forward. If I go through the poverty, let it be that it's me that will suffer it. But not that I will bring a child and watch your child die like a chicken and turn and say, Father, what did I do wrong? And you say, me too. That's how I saw it. Everybody shout, no way. How many students do very well? Secondary school, brilliant people. Wayek, nine papers. They step into the university and all of a sudden, 100 level results, nine Fs. You think they are dull. They are conducting tutorials. But they enter the exam hall. They only remember in the night when the exam has finished. It's not everybody who is lazy. Let me tell you. What of recurrent sicknesses? There are people today, there is no month they don't fall sick. Go to the hospital, they will tell you nothing is wrong. Now the doctors are wiser. Thank God for spiritual people becoming doctors. They don't waste time again. The moment they diagnose you, they see that you have come once, twice. They'll say, you know what? Find any available crusade and run quickly. Go to the front early and stand there and trust God to wipe your tears. That's why we need more spiritual people getting into our hospitals. So that they will not allow people to die like chickens. I look forward to times where God will give men and women of power. The moment you are a midwife helping a woman give birth and the baby is not coming out, you detect by the spirit, this is witchcraft. Right there, Shagato Sotolabaya. Help that lady. And all of a sudden, you find out that that woman gives birth. Koinonia today. It's not rising because there are no demons. Let me tell you. Make no mistakes. Only God knows how many powers try to kill me every day. I told you all the time. Only God knows how many people take my name to shrines. Oh, it has never happened in Israel. There was a woman called the widow of Nain. What killed her husband? She had only one child. One child. The husband now died. The child now died. On her way going, Jesus saw and said, No, this is not the issue of burial. I need to change something here. There are families. You will see them in a community. 32 people. Only 1% of them are men. And all the men are mad men. They are not, their, their brains are not even in place again. Madman is a woman that pays the school fees of children, is a woman that drives car, is a woman that builds a house, is a woman that does everything. All the men become useless. You see them playing draft in the morning and laughing and taking beer. It's a cause. There are families with a cause where the children never see their grandparents. Either they are in exile or they die. Please, tonight you are going to offer yourself as a living sacrifice that will change this. You, you will have to be a wicked person if you allow your children to go through this thing, I'm telling you. What of poverty? What of poverty? There are many people who went to Harvard, came back, anything they start die. The day you want to start importing it, that's when government banned it. Why was it exactly others have finished making their money just when you were about to start? What of people in ministry? They think it's normal. Everybody they raise disappoints them. There is a spirit. They raise so many men. But they disappoint them. There is no helper. 
a man will be 30 years in ministry who has become a father in the faith. You should have people to, you should not beg for bread again. But there is no man. You call for help, there is nobody. Some of, you see some of these women walking on the street, 71 years carrying firewood. Where are the children she gave birth to? Where are they? One is in prison. The other one is security somewhere. And they are about to throw him out. You find families where a lady has seven children from seven different men. Seven different men. She honestly does not even know which one is the husband of which. Because a madman will just rape her somewhere. And sometimes she can even be coming back from the house of God. It's a programming. It looks like a coincidence. What kind of coincidence keeps happening? You start business, you crash. You always lose money. You always lose joy. You always lose peace. You always run into trouble. They are chasing a thief. The moment they pass you, that's when police will say, from this place, pack all of them. You were innocent. It's a program. You reign, you ancient iron king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you were my king on your own. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and we have you were my king on your own. Listen. Help me. How can a man lose a job in 1999 until now he has not gotten a job? Is it that dull? See, let me tell you something. Sit down if you can. We'll soon stand up and pray. Listen, listen to me. When you study the laws of mechanics, Sir Isaac Newton postulated a law, we call it the first law of mechanics. And this is what it states, that every body continues in its uniform motion or a static state, right? It remains there until compelled by an external force to act otherwise through the law of inertia that if i leave this in one place theoretically speaking thank you i should come and find it in one place after a long time that's how the, your destiny will be if you sit down and you are wishing it will remain like that the only thing that will be changing is your age but your condition will remain the same how about men have you seen families where the men never leave their parents' homes? There is such a thing. They bring their wife, all the cousins and their wives to their father's house. You see that the house they are staying was the grandfather's house. The guy works in NMPC but cannot rent a good house. You ask him why, you say, okay, I'll do something about it. 45 years. He's still in his father's house. They share the parlor. They compartmentalize the kitchen. If you buy your first car 50 years, is that a testimony? You build a house at 55, is that a testimony? Take seriously what I'm saying. What of ministries? There are churches that this cause of poverty has still landed even on the ministers you will see a church with members but prosperity zero when it comes to finances you will never see increase in that area but tonight God put this body in my heart because it's time for somebody's lifting yes it is 
Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Barrenness. Every. Look at me. I want to tell you something now. And please, listen. We are here to help ourselves. But let me give you an information. Every case of barrenness is spiritual. E-V-E-R-Y. Every case of barrenness is spiritual. Let me repeat it. Every case of barrenness is spiritual. So says the Bible. The remedy for every case of barrenness was spiritual. And God opened the womb of Rachel. And God opened the womb of Leah. And God shut the womb of a Milka, David's wife. Every. So that when some things happen to you, you don't waste time. You know where to go for to look for help quickly. Quickly. Recurrent deaths. I remember one lady, I can't remember um, who now, but there used to be a lady. I remember the story faintly now that was dedicated to snakes, literally snakes. And the way snake molds, this molting, it happens to her physically. The outer skin begins to, you know, swell like peel. I'm not talking about just skin irritation. Literally, like a snake molting. It's good to marry from the house of God because the job has been done. You hear what I'm saying? It's a good advice, I'm telling you. No matter what is pursuing you, bring it to the house of God. The house of God is a factory where true solution is provided. When the devil wants to rubbish you, he makes you successful and then he goes to connect you with a very wrong person and your life begins to know that. A cause causeless shall not stand. Self-inflicted causes are results of ignorance and disobedience. Ignorance and disobedience. Ignorance and disobedience. Ignorance and disobedience. Self-inflicted causes are products of ignorance and disobedience. No matter how born again you are, if you don't tithe, your heavens are closed. That for sure. Whatever you think about the situation notwithstanding. Seeing then that these realities are true, what provision is in the kingdom to bail men out and exempt them? I'm going to show you the system in the kingdom designed to set men free. Ready? Psalms 102, verse 13. It's a mystery very few people understand. Please give us Psalms 102, verse 13. Read it if you're a child of God. One, two, read. Three things. Mercy, time, favor. Mercy, time, favor. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Even the set time, the Kairos moment, the opportune time is come. Because of that, arise and have mercy. Let me tell you something about the mercy of God. The mercy of God is not an attribute for sinners. The salvation of sinners only pass through the mystery of mercy. But mercy is more than, more than a provision just for sinners to experience salvation. You have to understand this. The mercy of God is part of the attributes of his person. The mercy of God is a system a system in the kingdom where guilty people are made free 
The mercy of God is a system, it's a provision in his wisdom, his infinite wisdom. He factored in a provision. Although righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne, but in his dealings with man, he introduced a mystery. Let me tell you something about mercy. Look up. Mercy only works for people who are in time. Mercy cannot work in eternity. <sighs> Otherwise, Satan will not be where he is. That's why he says his mercies are new every day. He ties time to the operation of mercy. Meaning whenever, just like he said, as far as the earth remains. So when you can see the morning, the mercy of God is valid. Mercy. Mercy is the attribute of God. Listen, that provokes his help to your life. Regardless of your satisfying the condition for it or not. Mercy. Is a powerful attribute. That is the ancient secret that the nation of Israel used to turn around battles. When they sinned against God, God gave them over to their enemies. And every time a prophet would intercept, there was an enchantment. They would have to chant something. You are good and your mercy. It was not a song. It was an invocation. Every time they started singing that song, for he is good and his mercy. See how many times the psalmist uses it. The psalmist was a benefactor of the mercy of God. Did everything wrong. But every time God would want to come in, he would remind him. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Bible tells us that the Lord's mercy can triumph. Come on now. That the Lord's mercy can triumph over judgment. So when I get to the end of my road, I know that I am deserving of everything should happen. That should happen. Yes, my father sacrificed to idols. Yes, my carelessness. I am not a tighter. I am qualified for financial bankruptcy. The last card, I danced, it did not work. I prayed, it did not work. The attribute for bailout. Is invoking the mercy of God. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Delilah. The Bible says his eyes were plugged. The symbol of light in his life. And the mystery that surrounded his power. His hair shoven completely. And they took him. The Bible says they took him to their temple. To make mockery of God. Everything was over. But as Samson leaned there. They didn't watch the hair grow. He said, oh Lord. He cried for mercy. And the moment he did that, see, there is one prayer God cannot say no to. If you have never been confident of a prayer that will be answered, try the prayer of mercy. Invoke mercy. Lord, I know I am undeserving of this. But I invoke your mercy. It is of the Lord's mercy Listen, it is of the Lord's mercy. Meaning, my lifetime is too fast for me to not have made a mistake. But it is of the Lord's mercy. Somewhere in my work, it creates a system, a provision. See, let me tell you, it is on grounds of this that the Bible can say, Rejoice not over me, my enemies. For when you think, Ah, there was a time this car now had an accident. Will he ever rise again? Don't go. Ah! The worst witchcraft in your life is to stop you from receiving God's mercy. You are finished. Mercy. And Samson pushed. And the Bible says he killed more people at his death than his lifetime. 
what of blind Bartimaeus? Thou son of David. Hold on. He never said, heal me. The Bible says God will give us the desires of our heart. I thought it would be, thou son of David, heal me. He said, thou son of David, have mercy. Mercy is an open check. And God had to come. He left and came. Thou son of David. There were two condemned criminals on the cross. Condemned. Once you hang on that cross, it's over for you. Two condemned criminals. One was talking nonsense. Like many people are still doing. They are quarter to finish in life. And they are still making noise. And the other one provoked his mercy. And he said, this day, today, not tomorrow, today, you will be with me in paradise. Are we together? Listen. The mercy of God is an attribute you need in your life. It's not for sinners. The mercy of God was designed in your work with Him to remedy for your limitations. There is such a thing as limitation. If I tell you every anointing that is in my life is just because of prayer and fasting, I will be lying. No. I have mastered the art of God's mercy. Years ago, during a pastor's, a pastor's conference, the ministers were lying down and praying and the minister who was testifying this said he went to lie down close to Papa Deboe to hear the prayer he was praying. And he said for over two or three hours, all Papa Deboe was saying was mercy. Mercy, Lord. You would think he stole church money. He knew, he understood. To pastor millions of people, you don't just need anointing, you need mercy. Jesus met a woman by the well. When he met that woman by the well, they started a conversation. Number one, that woman was a prostitute. Correct? And then because of that, more the disciples, oh, no, 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 don't come and corrupt Jesus. You're a bad woman. And Jesus started talking with her. And she started touching his mercy. And at the end of it, that woman ran and said, come and see the man who has told me what I have done. Mercy. Mercy vetoes everything in your life. And when the door settles, you are still standing. That's why you see, those who know this, when people are dancing and saying, the power of my might has given me this. Oh, this great ministry, Koinonia, Apostle, what wisdom. You are such an anointed man. I just laugh and look at them. You need to hear my prayer in the secret place. The mercy of God. When David, one day, the Bible says, when kings go for war, David was meandering his balcony, correct? And he looked at somebody's wife, she was bathing. And from the altitude, he could see her nakedness and he desired her. The Bible says he sent and they fetched that woman and they came. He now got a man's wife pregnant and ordered that they go and call Uriah in the heat of war. Not minding whether the nation of Israel would die. They carried Uriah and brought Uriah. Uriah said, my king, I'm here. He says, I just wanted you to come and have you seen your wife recently? I said, have you forgotten the ordinances of Israel? I should be there in the heat of battle. And he got angry. And all he did Listen, was to write a letter, a man's own death sentence, and gave him to the battle. And the painful part is that he died. Question, what was the difference between Cain and David? Cain killed Abel. Blood started crying, meaning when David killed Uriah, Blood should be crying. Correct? David went, wept, 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 wept. When all of that happened, you would think that after the, the child died, he would now tell the wife, it's okay, go, I won't marry you again. Who was the mother of Solomon? He did it again. Correct?
is David that will write his sins and ask them to sing it as a song. If it had not been the Lord by my side, now may Israel sing. If it had not been the Lord, he will ask the nation of Israel to chorus for his mercy shall endure ever faithful, ever sure. And they will begin to sing it. God want to destroy David. David will just find, he knew how to just tie God down. And God said, this is a man after my own heart. A man that understands. Not even Moses was called a man after his heart. Mercy. This is what our families need. This is what we need. This is what many ministries need. This is what many businesses need. Let me tell you something. We are rounding up. There is a system to be a recipient of God's mercy. Number one, a broken and a contrite heart. Write it down. Arrogant people are never qualified to be the benefactors of God's mercy. For as long as you think by yourself and in your strength you are qualified and deserving, you will never have it. Great is your mercy towards me. Your loving kindness towards me. Your tender mercy I see. Day after day. forefathers did not do anything, you are a joker. But the mercy of God has a way of exempting you. The mercy of God has a way of exempting you from the rubbish and the nonsense that should be your lot. The mercy of God can change any negative prophecy over any man's life, regardless of what was seen about you. A particular prophet now came and met David. Correct? And then started to speak to him in parables. There was a certain man who had a vineyard. And somebody, somebody came and grabbed the vineyard. And David said, who is that? Was angry. Say, you are the one who. Watch this. Do you know David was supposed to die? We have a series on mercy that we we'll deal with. I don't want to go there. But do you know when you read that scripture, when David asked for mercy, God said that death had been taken from him. David would have died. David would have died. The wages of sin is not sickness. The wages of sin is death. But mercy, but mercy, but mercy. There are some of you here, legally, you are supposed to be failures in life. So based on that concoction, those who knew you had the gods to even prophesy it, and what they were saying is right. But mercy. When you introduce mercy to the equation, calculation changes. Everything changes. So a murderer like Moses could now become a deliverer. By the mercy and the grace of God. He said, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Let me tell you, one of the greatest ways to break causes. Hear me. One of the greatest ways to end causes is to invoke the mercy of God. The mercy of God. The mercy of God over your life invoke the mercy of God over the works of your hands. 
the moment even as human beings if somebody tells you sorry if i look at you now come and make her i look at you and i say look you know you did this and i'm supposed to deal with you and all of a sudden you kneel down and say sir i am sorry do you not know that this position paralyzes me at once i look at you and say ah, i hate you but you have done something now that on a very good day what i plan to do for you i would have dealt with you i would have humiliated you i would have made sure your career were miserable but mercy And the terrible thing about, or the, well, not terrible, the righteousness about mercy is that every time mercy is invoked, it not only solves the current problem, it promotes you. Mercy will always lift. Mercy will always lift. It will not just take away the current predicament, but it will lift you and take you higher. Higher. By the mercy and the grace of God. By the mercy and by the grace of God. So it says, Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Joshua Selma, upon Koinonia, for the time. The time. The Lord wants to lift me, but there are certain levels of light and illumination I do not yet know. And if I'm to wait until I know all those things, I may never rise. So he introduces his mercy. And I rise to realms that even me, I know that is beyond my level of understanding. The mercy of God. You will find yourself in the company of people you know your age and your level in life should not bring you. Their skills brought them, but the mercy of God took you there. As we travel around, I have seen the honor of God by the grace of God, and it never stops humbling me. When I see the things that people do on account of their perception of the grace of God upon my life. Sometimes I stand by the mirror and I look. I say, except for the mercy of God. Who dash monkey banana? Who really dash monkey banana? You see, it's not false humility. It's an acknowledgement of truth. The mercy of God. You are there boasting about being an entrepreneur and you don't have up to 100,000 in your account. You better realize that there is a dimension of the mercy of God in this equation that can arise and lift you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a dimension in ministry. I believe in principles. I teach principles here. But let me tell you the truth. There are many gaps in this equation to success that we are still learning how it works. There are still gaps. And one thing I've learned is that those gaps are provisions that only God can fill. That's where His mercy comes in. And He amplifies and multiplies little things. And your life becomes a sign and a wonder. Because I have seen women who never train their children the children, eight children, all of them became great. They got born again. Five are pastors. All of them are millionaires. They love God. They are wonderful people walking in the ways of God. But the woman and her husband don't know jack about parenting. That one is not wisdom again. Let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Let the strong man not glory in his strength. The Bible says, But let him that glory at glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. When you know him, you know he's full of compassion and mercy. I will worship him forever, love him forever, because this God is too good. I will worship him forever. Love forever because See, way before I learned certain principles I knew now, I was already getting their results. When I learned the principle, I knew that truly faith.
favor and the mercy of God really qualifies the unqualified. I have seen levels of breakthrough in my life that happened before I knew the principles that brought them. Yes, this is true. Way before I understood principles of church growth and increase, I have been seeing the hand of God. And if there is a science to growth, if you don't know it, it should not happen. But mercy, mercy, mercy. Tonight we are going to invoke mercy upon our lives, upon our families, and take away this air of pride that makes you think, I have to marry because I'm beautiful. I think I'm intelligent. I should be a millionaire by now. The pride of men is the reason why they never get qualified for mercy. One of the most powerful mysteries of exemption against causes, against yokes. Listen, I've seen people, Ejimi, they are not even born again yet, but sincerely. You know, they call it in house affair in Jimmy. You seen that happen? They take their names to the Habalists and the Habalists will reject it and they are not born again. They don't love God. They don't know Him. But their hearts are so sincere. Somehow they know there is a God out there and whoever it is, they are grateful to Him. And God just protects them. Regardless of the fact that they are not prayerful, their hearts are wicked, yet God protects them. I've seen drunkards on the road that would drink to stupor and enter their car and drive safely back home. They never fear death. And somehow you even pray and say you're a wicked man. God will deal with you. But you'll find out that 10 years that guy is still drowsing his way in this world and not dead. They never fear anything. They hear that there is crisis. Bomb will explode where you know they are. In the night you see, see him back. Safe and hale and hearty. You didn't die and he laughed. That guy doesn't take communion. That guy has never attended prayer meeting. That guy has never attended miracle service. He doesn't even know what his genotype is. Honestly, he doesn't know whether he's sick or healthy. All he knows is that his heart is a sincere heart and it cries out to God. Destroy it not, for there is a blessing in it. Destroy it not, for there is a blessing. This is what has kept some of our parents home. Because you know that it is based on keeping the principles of the kingdom. They would have died since. It would have, it would have swallowed them. If the Lord had not been by my side, now may Israel say. I think of what men would have done to me. When I didn't know the principles of restoration. When I didn't know the principles of long life. I imagine what would have happened. And I wonder how many things I do not know now that I will know in the future. How I walk in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death. Yet his mercy keeps me. If all else fail, invoke his mercy. I give you a formula. If all else fails, invoke his mercy. You have submitted names for prayer requests and nothing has happened. Lord, mercy for my family. They are all sinners. Mercy for my family. Mercy for this yoke of darkness that is destroying men. Nobody in my family is making it. And on legal basis, the devil has his hold upon them. And if you try to talk to them, the painful part is they won't listen to you. Because the God of this system has blinded their minds. But you can invoke mercy. Invoke mercy. Invoke mercy. Are you blessed tonight? I want you to sing for me the stanza of that song. Himela. Himela. Oh, Kaka, help me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, the sound. Remela. Remela. Yes, we know. Trust that stanza. The stanza of the song. 
That's what I really want to hear. When I think upon your goodness and your faithfulness each day,
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mercy is a weapon. And you are about to use it now. Ah. And he showed me Joshua the high priest. Standing before the Lord. And the accuser came before him. Attempting to rail accusations. And he said, is this not a reed that I have taken out of fire? And he said, the Lord rebuke you. Listen. The mercy of God is a weapon. You can use it and say, Satan, I know you are supposed to destroy me. But what about this? I present to you the mercy of God. I present to you the blood of the eternal covenant. I present to you the advocacy of Jesus at the right hand of the Father, standing and speaking. I present to you the sinless blood. I present to you Calvary. Speak your voice. Go. Invoke mercy. Hey, come on, 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 Hallelujah. Hear me. Tonight you are going to use it as a weapon over the devourer. I know I've not been a titer. You are authorized to destroy me. But see the blood. When I see the blood. When I see the blood. When I see the blood. You should be destroyed. But the blood will speak. Hear me. You live the wayward life. And all kinds of things happen. And the earth cries against you. But when I see the blood. When I see the blood. You are involved in all kinds of blood covenants and fraternities in ignorance but now that you are in Christ when I see the blood lift up your voice and plead the blood hey! in what mercy come on now Hallelujah. Hear me. The Bible says, blotting out every handwriting. There are handwritings. There are records kept in the realm of the spirit that testify that you should not live long. There are records in the realm of the spirit that testify that you should not be blessed. There are records in the realm of the spirit that testify that you should not have any child again. The devil says you wasted all your children and all of them have gone. There is a record in the realm of the spirit that says you have misused all the opportunities that you were given. But tonight, please the blood. It can blot it out. Come on now. It can blot it out. It can blot it out. It can blot out. It can blot out. It can blot out. It can blot out. It can Take <laughs> it, 
5 verse 7 please quickly we want to pray and then we'll round up Lamentations chapter 5 verse 7 our fathers have seen and are not and we have borne their iniquities but now if I appropriate the revelation that I've been called out of every tribe out of every tongue, out of every nation. I can't go to hell because I, I was born in Kogi or I was born in Plateau State. I did ask them to do witchcraft. And now that they have done it, if the land is caused, I exempt myself. I can't be a victim of another man's wickedness. Listen, I'd like you to pray with all your heart and say, I begin a new order. A new order. Dissociated from the past. Alienated from which Kapara and the causes and yokes by the blood of the Every 
Valete por rojo pata, y para nada va con reggae de pata, va a frente para acá, va a ser reggae de pata, 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 va a ser reggae de pata. Lift your hands, I want to pray for you. This is our year of triumph. Now, thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph. I want to pray for you. Listen, let me tell you. If God be God, everything that you're carrying, I don't care whether it's self-inflicted. You have invoked the blood. The blood provokes the compassion of the Christ. His advocacy at the throne of the Father does not happen automatically. It happens in response to an incense sent from the earth. The same way his high priest, priestly ministry, the Bible says is in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek did not speak until he had an encounter with Abraham and he gave him a tenth of all. I want to pray for you now because there are lives and destinies under the yoke of witchcraft. Koinonia remains an uncomfortable place for them until it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be lifted from off your neck and the yoke from off your shoulder and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing yes I stretch my hands right now hear me I'm hearing in my spirit household wickedness and the fire of God is falling upon all who are victims of that. I stretch my hands right now. Let it be. Shabbos kupadabash. Lekreteke tokos koto balakata. Shepreketeke kosuta bariatakata. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Inside, outside, I stretch my hands. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus, be free right now from activities of witchcraft. Hallelujah. Demonic activities. Strangers coming to you in the night to sleep with you. Men, women, animals, and all kinds of things. Coming to destroy you, plant rubbish in your body. I pray right now. In the name of Jesus. Anyone who is a victim of every kind of manipulation in dreams, caused as a result of ancestry, right now in the name of Jesus, I command freedom, I command liberty, I command freedom, I command liberty. The blood speaks right now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. He said, the earth is caused for your sake. He says, with the sweat of your brows shall you eat. For the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 verse 29, it says, and if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I want to speak and set you free. There is a cause of hardship. Many people are victims of this cause. Hardship has nothing to do with poverty. Listen carefully. Many people here, you are standing representing your families as I pray. And right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, I stretch my hands right now. I command that yoke be taken from off your shoulder. Help them please. Be taken from off your shoulders. Be taken from off your shoulders. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command that cause of action. Be taken from off your shoulders. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. I declare to you a dimension of ease you have never seen in your life. Step into it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. of this favor bad luck that looms around the life of men and women here so that you never rise is like a veil on your face 
and anyone who sees you walks against you. I command that veil be taken off right now. Be taken off right now. Be taken off right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Cain said, My punishment is too great. He said, I have become a fugitive and a vagabond. He said, All who see me will slay me. All who see me will slay me. All who see me will slay me. Whether they are strangers, something upon me makes all who see me to slay me. Any mark, Seketo Shalakras Katabadiasha, Lebren Tekes Kotabras Kataliasha, any mark upon your life, upon your business, upon your ministry that keeps attracting woes, keeps attracting scandals, keeps attracting negativism. Right now, in the name of Jesus, that must be blotted forever. Be blotted forever. Be blotted forever. Any strange sickness in your body, through your blood, that came from ancestry, genotypes, SS, Zakatosia, AS. There's no such reality in the realm of the spirit. That provision does not exist. It's a manipulation from the second heavens, altering the genetics of men. But right now, in the name of Jesus, every blood related issue passed to you by covenant. I blot it out of your body right now. I blot it out right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The classic sign of curses and yokes is the presence of patterns. You usually are not the first to experience that. But I want to prophesy right now. I don't know what patterns you have seen around your life, you have seen around your finances, you have seen around your work with God. You are up today, down tomorrow. You are serious today, unserious tomorrow. You love the Lord today, you love something else tomorrow. Your ministry rises today, crashes tomorrow. Your finances is up today and is blown like the wind. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says every house is built by some man, but God is the builder. Therefore I decree and declare that any pattern, any spiritual construction that was built by an agency other than the Christ, in the name that is above all names, I command a tearing down and a rebuilding now. 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 to the realm of the spirit whatever should have happened to your life by now for good but because of the presence of these embargoes there are dimensions you should have entered in Christ there are levels of growth levels of advancement and influence and wisdom and access that you should have been a custodian of by grace and for whatever reason Certain objections have risen in the realm of the spirit to stop you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I provoke restoration right now. 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 I pray over your life. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. And the Bible says Elijah ran on bare foot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I want to speak speed in your life. I don't know what tied you down. By now, 
according to the program of God for you. You should have entered certain levels. You should have been the mother of four children now, but you are yet to have one. Therefore, I command speed. Step into it right now. In the name of Jesus, I command speed. Speed of accomplishment. Speed of accomplishment. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The last prayer point I want to pray for you. For there is an unction that can come on a man. There is an anointing that can produce an outcome that is not available in the earth. There is an anointing that is called the breaker anointing. The yoke destroying. There is such a provision in the kingdom to not only be set free but to be a possessor of a spiritual substance that is capable of causing everyone within the influence of your grace to come under the influence of the liberty that you possess. It's an anointing. There is a provision in the dealings of God with men where men can carry atmospheres that have prophetic implication to all those who come within the circumference of that atmosphere. You will not have the time to pray for everybody, but you can carry a climate. I want to release a grace and unction upon your life that you will go back home. You will go back to regions. You will go back to places. You will enter your room. There are physical territories that are caused, but like Mara, the water, you will pick it, and in the name of Jesus, you will change that situation. Like the... Listen, listen, listen. The Bible says, that the prophets were eating and they said there is death in this food and he said bring me flour and he put it and said go ahead and eat there is an ability, there is an unction that can veto the plans of darkness in the name of Jesus wherever you are like a mantle may that anointing come upon your life right now a breaker anointing the grace and the unction carry the fire Carry the grace, carry the unction, command deliverance, make environment cost free in the name of Jesus. May your presence, your presence in your home, your presence in your office, your presence in your ministry sustain an ability to nullify ordinances nullify yokes and causes and enchantment surely they shall gather but because their gathering is not of God there is a substance you possess that will disengage everything that is of God receive it now in the name of Jesus thank you for lifting Thank you for lifting. 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 Lift your hands all over this building, inside and outside. And just bless him in tongues, bless him in the spirit. Oh, keep up a cassava la barato so balana macaria na balana bow. So the one who is able to change anyone, the only wise God, the fountain of wisdom. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Forget not his benefit. 
We give you all the praise at the house of faith. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Before we start tonight, I just want you to begin to count your blessings and say, Lord, I count you faithful. I count you faithful. If you don't have anything to thank God for, you can pray in tongues. But I know that God has been faithful. Lift your voice and tell him thank you. Don't be ungrateful. For the life, the psalmist said, If the Lord had not been on my side, now may Israel pay. voice and give him all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The doer of miracles in our midst, the mighty God, the one who is doing wonder, glorious in holiness, cheerful in the praises of men, doing wonder. Oh, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. You have not left us without a witness. We give you all the glory. Yes, Lord, we give you praise. I worship you, great I am. You are mighty. the strong and breasted one. You are the strong and breasted one. I worship you, great I am. I worship you, great I am. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. I worship Strong and present one. I lift my hands in worship as I sing praises to your name. I lift my hands in worship. time I lift my hand. I lift my head in worship. That's not what you think. Oh, yeah. 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 We stick to your name, oh, God.
Hallelujah. God bless you. Please hug and greet one another. And then we see that God bless you. Say hello to everyone. Make sure you are greeting someone. There should be someone at your right and left or at least one of the sides. So say hello to someone. Good evening, everybody. We thank the Lord for what He's doing in our midst. We give Him all the praise in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, let's get to work. Please bring out your pen, notepad, whatever you have to write. There is a lot to cover. God is in a hurry to announce you, and so we have to finish the curriculum so fast. Trust me, I'm not motivating you. God is in a hurry to let the world see what He has made out of you. The Bible says that we are objects of praise. When an artist finish, uh, when he finishes designing a work, he brings it out, and then everybody keeps looking at the work, and it describes the excellence of that artist. Hallelujah! Jesus, we give you praise. How many of us here are very confident about what God is doing in our lives? You are not guessing. You know that you are working accurately. This is not guess again. This is not trial and error. If I will be great, if God will bless me, or if my father is great. One of the things that I believe we have come to respect in this place um, are the laws of the kingdom. Everybody say the laws of the kingdom. The laws of the kingdom are a revelation of the love of God to mankind. So that your success in life or your failure becomes absolutely dependent on you and not on God. And if you take responsibility for your life, listen to me please, if you take responsibility, I assure you no power in existence you know, some of them said, if you know where I come from, and all of that. The only way to prevail over the wickedness that exists in this realm is to pay attention to the laws of the kingdom. They were designed to cripple Satan. There are two ways to bind the devil. One is by prayer. Another is by knowledge. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight I'll be sharing on something very powerful, building on what I taught last week. If you've not listened to last week's message, please listen again and again. I think I've listened to it about two times or so. Extraordinary success. This is very important. This is not, listen, let me clarify something. Hold on. This is not this success, success thing. You know, there's, there's a way people behave about success. You know that this is foolishness. This is madness going nowhere. Right? Oh, I'll be successful in this and that and that. Things will change and people jump and gyrate. And at the end of the service, you ask the person, how was the service? They say, what? I, I cannot even explain. You ask the person now, so what did you learn? And what new decision are you going to make as a result of what you've learned? Say, I don't know, but I just feel it in my body. Something has happened. You will never be successful that way. Christianity is not being fetished. Are you getting my point? God makes you anointed and he he builds you with content. There are many people with good experiences. Oh, we fell down, we got up, wonderful. But if there is no content inside of you, you are going nowhere. Absolutely. So it's not enough to fall down and say, I was shaking, I couldn't describe why my right hand was just moving alone. Wonderful. Unfortunately, it doesn't give you a job. Unfortunately, it doesn't make you great. That is a spiritual experience communicating something. We're not neglecting the operations of the spirit. But you must have content. Tell your neighbor, have content. Mm. Praise the Lord. So God is giving us wisdom. God is giving us keys that will distinguish us. Let's get to work tonight. Father, thank you. Tonight's teaching seeks to open us up to the dynamics of greatness. I want to share with us in detail how God announces men and how God makes men great. 
It's not just you will be great. I want to show you how it happens. Praise the Lord. And I want you to follow me because, you know, I sense in my spirit, I've been saying this thing like the Ark of Noah, that I know that it will happen this year, that a season is coming and it's going to be so fast what the Lord is going to do. Remember the scripture I shared with us that the Lord told me, that will increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. My Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. I thank you for listening. Hallelujah. Ah! What you will hear tonight will so bless you. I'm th- no, 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 no. Don't shout amen. It's something I'm about to start teaching. <laughs> you know, sometimes these things cut out my head. You know how someone takes. All of you who were in the world, who God delivered you and ransomed you from all kinds of nonsense. You know? Praise the Lord. You see a madman on the road alone and he's just singing and bouncing. Even if he's inside a gutter, he's just singing and in his mind, he's in a world all by himself. That's what the word of God does. He said, I found your word and I did eat them and it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. He said, my son, eat thou honey for it is good. Eat thou honey. There is what you can know. You don't need anything to happen physically. Are you getting my point? It's like a farmer who plants, pastor. You don't plant a tree and then you come and you are wondering. You are so anxious. People look at you and say, ah, will this thing grow? No. The man just goes to start buying bags in preparation because he knows that the ground was commanded to produce. Are you getting my point? Mm. So, there are things that when you know, you start rejoicing and dancing. Because for, for it not to manifest, is like saying Jesus didn't die on the cross. Is that guaranteed? Hallelujah. Let's get to the word of God. Thank you, Jesus Christ. What is the secret of greatness? What does it even mean to be great, really? What does it mean to be great? You know, we talk about greatness. What does it mean to be great? Because we have to understand, in the kingdom, what does it mean to be great? Hallelujah. To be great means to have an enlarged sphere of influence. To have an enlarged sphere of influence. He said, thou shalt increase my greatness. An enlarged sphere of influence. To be great means to have increased access. To be great means to have increased access. Access to anything. Resources, people. Please make sure you write. To be great means to have what? Increased sphere of influence. And it also means to have increased access. Access to whatever. Resources, people, opportunities. Hallelujah. And why is greatness important in the kingdom? We must get this. You know, everything we discuss, we discuss with respect to the kingdom. Why is it necessary? Listen. Do not let anybody preach you out of the sincere desire to be great. Because sometimes in a bid to show that we are Christians, we say, Lord, please don't make me great. Let me not fall into sin. Let me not do this. Kingdom advancement is highly dependent on kingdom influence. It takes greatness and influence to enforce the kingdom. You must understand this. No one will truly be able to influence this system and bring in the value system of the kingdom without increase 
without influence and grace. The Bible says, and the boy Jesus, for him to be able to carry out his assignment, he had to grow in wisdom. He had to grow in what? Stature. Not just the word stature there does not mean um, physical growth. No. The word stature there means influence. A time came in the life of Jesus. They said, all men seek for thee. He was on the mountain and 5,000 men, aside women and children, came. Everybody say influence. It is very important to understand the component that the prophetic agenda of God is dependent upon. So that we will not just be religious. Now, there are people who want to be great just because they have suffered too much. While that is not a wrong reason, it's not, it's not, it does not qualify to be an ultimate motivation when you come into the kingdom. You say, I've suffered too much. I must be great in life. That's ambitious. It's wonderful. Except for the fact that when you come into the kingdom, you must edit your motive to suit the desire of the king. Hallelujah. So God wants us to be great. Without greatness, listen, without greatness, he told Abraham, he said, I will make your name. I will give you an identity of greatness. And that greatness will call the attention of the king and the people around and they will come to see what your God is doing. He said, it shall come to pass in that day that the mountain of the Lord's house, have you read that scripture? The mountain of the Lord's house shall do what? Be exalted above all other mountains. And as a result, men will flow to it. Until the mountain is exalted, men cannot flow to it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It is easy to listen to a great man than to listen to a man who is struggling with greatness. That's true. So the Lord wants to increase our greatness. Our greatness in every ramification. Financially, spiritually, and otherwise. Oh, I receive what He wants to give. I receive it. No religion would preach me out of this. No piety, no sense of false holiness will push me out of the revelation. It is as a result of the, my love for the King that I need to gain an influence across the mountains that He has given me the authority to legislate so that they will share the word of the Lord. Distant shores and the islands will see your light. Don Moen got it precisely. That's what will happen to you. Distant shores and the islands will see your light. As it rises on Thank you, Jesus Christ. So what is the secret of greatness? How? I know that we keep, you know, the, the, issue, the issue I have with the body of Christ is that we do a lot of preaching, but we do very little of teaching. You know what it means to preach? To preach means to declare. It means to proclaim. It means to bring you into an awareness of a reality. That's what it means to preach. But to teach means to give you understanding of the operation of that thing. Hallelujah. That's the challenge with the body of Christ. We do a lot of preaching. God wants to make you great. How many of you believe you are going to be great? Say me. Say now lift up your hand. Be great. And the person says amen. That's preaching. Wonderful preaching. Except for the fact that it does not work like that in the kingdom. That's not how your lecturer taught you. He didn't come to the class and say, how many of you are interested in having a degree? He said, sir, me or oh, me, I've, I've been writing jam. And he said, are you serious? He said, all right. This course is yours. No, you don't, you don't behave like that. Hallelujah. You sit down two seasons of dealing that will prune you. You will cry through the rain, but you will remain here for the excellency of something that is greater than your pain. Hallelujah. How come life teaches us an obvious way to be great? But when it comes to the kingdom, we don't pay attention to the teaching of the word. Carry a weak hundred level student, pastor. I 
as weak as whatever, sit that student down for six years under a medical curriculum and you produce a doctor. Bold enough to confront sicknesses and diseases. The same person who will see someone six years ago convulse and be confused and not know what to do. Six years later, he's seen someone convulsing and while everybody is moving, he says, no, no, I know what to do. Everybody say knowledge. Knowledge keeps you in charge. So what other people are running away from you, stand, you say, uh-uh, I'm not ignorant. I know exactly what to do. The Bible says Jesus himself knew what to do. May you know what to do in this life. It's dangerous not to know what to do. When the devil throws sickness, may you know what to do. When poverty attempts to come, may you know what to do. When death and all these things that kill men, if you don't know what to do, it will kill you. Don't let anybody preach you out of this truth. It's on the strength of what you know that you reign in this life. It's a rule thou in the midst of your enemies. And he made two great lights. One to rule in the day and the other to rule in the night. When you have that light, you will rule both in the day and the night. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Say after me, God wants me to be great for the sake of his kingdom. Say it again, God wants me to be great for the sake of the kingdom. And I choose to cooperate with him. I made some very interesting discoveries. One of my goals in life is not to waste my time on earth. One of my very personal goals in life is that I'm not going to join the crowd of people wasting their time on this is how they do it, this is how they do it. Uh -uh. I choose to be like the Bereans. The Bible says they sat down to find out how is this thing done. So you don't waste 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 years of your life. Then you find out that you've been making a mistake for 60 years. And you have to go back and begin to undo your life. Hallelujah. There are people who have time. But they do not have the knowledge and the information to make them great. By the time they spend all the time in their dying days, they get the knowledge. But there is no time to put it to work. You have time and God is granting you knowledge. Take advantage of it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The secret to greatness in the kingdom is encapsulated in one word. And I know you've heard that word, but tonight, just keep away what you've heard and listen and let's explore the word. The secret of greatness in the kingdom is hidden in one word. And that word is called favor. Right in there. We're going to be exploring something tonight. The secret of greatness in the kingdom is shrouded in one word word. Favor. Ah! Open our eyes tonight in the name of Jesus. Bring the days of struggling to an end. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The secret to greatness in the kingdom is favor. Hmm. What is favor? Favor. Favor means access beyond your efforts. When you gain access beyond your efforts. Many of us have had a lot of messages about favor. But many of them have not been balanced. And so we know so much about favor. But we see very little or none of it in our lives. Hallelujah. The first thing I want you to know about favor. Is that favor is not a mystery. This is one of the things we have been taught by well-meaning people that favor in the kingdom. The fact that it is undeserved does not mean it cannot be activated. Thank you, Jesus. Favor means access beyond your effort. It means divine approval. Unmerited access. Favor is unmerited. 
but it must be activated to work in your life. So many of us have been taught that somehow in the journey of your life, favor just finds its way to your life. You may wait forever and never see that favor. Although it is unmerited, there are laws that activate its coming. It is the operation, the, the dispensing of favor that you cannot explain. And I will tell you why. But the initiation and the maintenance of that realm of favor is absolutely predictable. Absolutely. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Is someone getting blessed already? The Bible teaches us that there are two levels of favor. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Please, let's have it. If you can have it in Amplified. If it's not Amplified, no problem. I want to hurry up because I want to dwell on certain things. This is just an introduction. There are two levels of favor or two dimensions to favor as, as revealed in the Word of God. Okay, let's, let's just open up so we can hurry up. I don't want us to wait here too long tonight. Okay. Please just look up so we we'll hurry up. Everyone, let's read. One, two, read. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in broad and full understanding, and in stature and years, and in with and favor with who? And so the Bible shows us that there are two levels of favor. Please get this. There is favor with God. Everybody write. And there is favor with men. And these two levels operate on different sets of laws. It is absolutely possible to have favor with God and not have favor with men. And it is absolutely possible to have favor with men and not have favor with God. Someone getting blessed tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Favor with God and favor with men. Since we have established that the key, the secret to greatness in the kingdom is favor. Everybody say the secret to my greatness is favor. Say it convincingly. The secret to my greatness is favor. Hallelujah. Oh, how true. How true. You neglect this truth to your own detriment. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Hope is rising for someone tonight. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy how do you secure favor with God? This is the first part. Let's discuss it very quickly. How do you secure favor with God? We are being very mathematical in our approach this night. So the secret to greatness is favor. We are examining that subject since that is the key that holds our greatness in the kingdom. And we have seen that according to Luke 2.52, there is favor with God and favor with men. So how do we secure favor with God? Number one, you want favor with God, you need three keys. The first key is that you must have the fear of the Lord. Please don't make a mistake about this. You want favor with God. The first requirement, are you seeing now that favor with God it's not free. Huh? I get very, very disturbed at the gospel that makes believers irresponsible. Just make them believe that everything can just happen like that. No, sir. If everything just happens like that, God has to apologize to the little children and the countries that die. That's true. If it was entirely God that controls the distribution of wealth, then God would have to apologize as to why a terrorist group would be so rich 
and the ministry will be so broke. Are you getting my point now? The heaven of heavens is the Lord. But the Bible says the earth has He given to the Son. The fear of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10. Media, you help us please. We need a lot of speed here. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10. You must possess the fear of the Lord. You want to secure favor with God. Proverbs 9 verse 10. The reverend and worshipful fear of the Lord. Let's just use um, King James, except where we went from. I told that we rush. The fear of the Lord is what? The beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy is understanding. You want to be wise? You want to walk in wisdom? The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning. It takes wisdom for you to even explore the mysteries of the kingdom. And the Bible says the fear of the Lord is what gives you that access. That's where your journey begins. Everybody say the fear of the Lord. What does it mean to fear God? It doesn't mean to run away from God. To fear God means to have respect. You can replace that word fear with the word reverence and loyalty. It doesn't mean to run away from Him. No. The fear of the Lord means to have respect. Hallelujah. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence. There is life everlasting. I will reverence you. Listen, can I tell you something? In the body of Christ, many people believe in Jesus, but very few people have respect for him. It's possible to believe a man and not respect that man. Is that true? You can believe in your boss. There's nothing you can do. Open the door of your office. Is the one sitting there. So you believe he's your boss. But there is this reverence, honor, respect. Let's look at something. The Bible says in Psalm 25, Psalm 25 verse 14. He said the secret things of the Lord are not with them that pray in tongues. Not with Christians. Not with those who fall under the anointing. Not with prophets, not with apostles. The secret things of the Lord are not even with them who have faith. The secret things of the Lord. The things of the Lord are with many people, but the secret things, the hallowed bread of the Spirit, they are with them that fear Him. He said, as, an, as a result, He will show them. He never said the things of the Lord. There are, there are many things but the secret. Every great man has a secret. It takes only a fool to share everything to everybody. You don't do that. You don't have visitors come into your house and your mother says, Come, let me even show you. We bought a new mattress. Come inside our bedroom. No. Hallelujah. But there are certain people because of the depth of reverence. Maybe a worker in the house who respects that man. You, the person can even have sons that are irresponsible, but he will call a house help into his bedroom and say, let me show you something. The secret things. There are chambers in the spirit, my brother, and everywhere is not accessible to everyone. Although we are in the kingdom, the secrets of the Lord. He said, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book. The book is there, but it, it's not everybody who opens it. Hallelujah. The clearest proof of your reverence for God is to keep His commands. I want to give you a spiritual litmus test. And let's look at that very quickly in John 14 verse 21. John 14 21. The clearest proof 
Don't just say, I share God. No, there are exact parameters to measure. I love the kingdom. It doesn't lead you to confusion. You can know here and now, right now. I don't care whether you've been a preacher for 20 years. I don't care whether you cry if any song is being raised. The Bible says, She that had my what? So it's one thing to have it. Is that true? And does what? And keepeth them. He it is that loves me. That has respect and reverence for me. And as a result, He that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Is that in your scripture? That means God is saying, I will come, I will reveal dimensions to him. He that obeys me is he that loves me. It's not enough to just say, I love you. I fear you. I will. There are so many believers, talk is cheap. First John 5 verse 3. The Bible gives us another very clear test. First John 5 verse 3. Oh, Shibakata Labakura Sidabaladabai. Somebody is changing in the name of Jesus. First John 5, verse 3. Can we read together? One to read. For this is the word love of God that we keep his commandments. And the Bible says his commandments are not burdensome. The word grievous, yes, the word burdensome. Hallelujah. He said, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. His commands are not burdensome. Please don't let anybody fool you. There are laws in the kingdom. I've said it. These things are it's not the law of Old Testament. It's, they are the laws that give structure to the kingdom. The laws of the kingdom are like the skeleton in a man's body. That's what gives form and structure to the kingdom. Hallelujah. You must have the fear of the Lord. You must have the spirit of reverence. So I can look at your life and know whether you fear God or not. Hallelujah. Don't say, ah, I, I fear God by faith. Even him, he knows. Uh -uh. There are exact parameters. You're not walking in his ways. You're not living by his principles and his value system. Don't tell me you fear God. When you, can, you don't know the difference between church and a disco hall. Between, well, believers don't in this side of God's kingdom are not so involved in all those things again. But there are all kinds of things we do. And we believe. Listen, please and please. And I, I, don't, I, don't, mean this, I don't mean this to, um, to discredit ministers and ministries in the body of Christ. But I've said it again and again. That the message of grace is only an accurate message. If it is accepted as part of the full gospel. Are you getting my point? The whole gospel must be preached. There is a level to which the grace message is taught. And God tells you, oh, don't concentrate on your love for God. Concentrate on his love for you. And concentrate on all of that. And you know, anything will happen. Everything has been done wonderful. What then is the reward of obedience? Why then? Is there hellfire? If everything is like that, God must apologize to Ananias and Sapphira. Don't you think so? Was it not in the New Testament they fell down and they died? Why? Couldn't he have at least given them a chance? Maybe they will repent later on. How could a loving God make the lake of fire? Hallelujah. Seven churches in, in the book of Revelation, when God began to talk to them, He was focused on their work. I know your work. I know your work. Is, is that in your Bible? Brothers and sisters, be careful. Hallelujah. Honor the body of Christ, but you must realize that if the gospel is not taught holistically, it can lead people into error. There are a lot of people missing it and dancing around in ignorance, believing. Are you getting my point? 
Let me share with you something that will surprise you. D.L. Moody. Many of you have read about him, right? D.L. Moody was a mighty evangelist of God. And he came and preached for decades. When D.L. Moody died, sir, after 10 years, they decided to do a, like a little census to follow up the converts of D.L. Moody. Please listen. This is, this is not an exaggerated statement. Hallelujah. And they found out that only one out of 10 converts of D.L. Moody were still standing in the faith. Are you getting what I'm saying? I respect him. I honor him. Hallelujah. It was, look at such a great man. After laboring, they found out that most of the people who were coming out in his meetings, only one out of ten remained faith and were still in the faith. We are not talking of people who build ministries. Those who were still eligible to make heaven according to the, the standards of the word of God. What happened to all the emotionalism that happened in those days? And then they took the same census for a man called Charles G. Finney. Hallelujah. And they found out most of the great men you see, most of the great men, they were products of that man's revival. When you got born again in his, his meeting, you hear everything that keeps you in the faith for life. Something is wrong with our gospel. It's not incorrect, but it's not complete either. There are missing sides that we must couple together. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. God is a loving God, but God is also a just God. Hallelujah. What I've just told you now is called the gospel of the kingdom. It switches dimension and lets you know that Jesus is not only a savior, but he is a king. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We have allowed people to do all kinds of things. There are believers today who have all kinds of pornography on their phones, their laptops. They watch it. And the moment the Holy Spirit wants to convict them, they say, I'll never feel guilty. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Tomorrow they go back and do it again. Somebody goes, come on now, let's, let I, you, know, you trust me, I love you too much not to tell you the truth. People sleep around and do all kinds of things. And yes, God is a forgiving God. There is a difference between a challenge in your life and the spirit of rebellion at work in your life. Rebellion is a perpetual, willful, continual state of violating God's principles. And the consequence is hellfire. I don't care whether you're a pastor or whether you are whatever. Please take what I'm saying seriously. Hallelujah. Paul, the one who brought what we know as the Pauline epistles. If his gospel was so pleasant, I have a question. Why did they stone him? Have you ever wondered? Why did they stone him? What did he say that got the people angry? That they stoned him? Hallelujah. Why did they behead James? It wasn't just because they were angry at them. There was a content that we are missing today. And that's the reason. I'm telling you, this is why many believers are not powerful. Anything comes and just throws us down. Because there is a content of the gospel that needs to be re-examined. Now don't carry your zeal and go and listen to every message a man of God is preaching and you get up and say, I know better, that's foolishness. I hope you understand that God is granting us maturity. But I am just telling you that as much as the great message is good, it only makes sense when it is incorporated as the whole truth. There are many other components of the kingdom. What's the formula for water? The chemical formula for water is what? H2O. Is that true? Just add one more um, what now of oxygen, it becomes H2O2. What is that? Are you seeing that? Same thing that can be water now for adding something wrong, it can become poison at once and kill you. Everything in the kingdom must be taught within the dimensions that Jesus kept them. 
Hallelujah. I'm saying this because there are people who will be listening to these teachings all across. And some of you, God is going to trust you with ministry. You will have your churches. Please don't be afraid of being criticized. You must stand and teach the truth. Are you getting me? I remember somebody who sent me a text one day and said, Please, um, I have a problem with you praying for people. How do believers just manifest and you say you are casting out demons out of them? Is that really true? And I, I just sent the person my text. I said, I love you. We see from different perspectives in the kingdom. And God will help us. We operate from the perspective that we see. And that's all I said. Praise the Lord. Time is a revealer. I hope you know that. Time. Time. There are some things you should never talk about. Time. Just allow time to pass. Time. That's why sometimes you say something and God keeps quiet. Hmm. People just say, you will never make it. And God never responds. And you are saying, God, God has already spoken. Time is a language in this realm. It can speak so loud. Brothers and sisters, when we started this thing, you are seeing I cannot tell you how many people criticize the things we are doing. They say you won't laugh. I, 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 I saw many zillion pastors. Those of you who were around those times, you know that it was madness in this side of God's kingdom. Everybody was doing everything. People carrying briefcases and ladies all around them. I am this, I am that. People scrounging to go for radio programs and all of that. And some of us look like fools. But he has chosen the foolish thing. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your glory. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your praise. Oh, 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 listen, if I mislead you and I teach you error, the God of heaven is going to judge me. Even if I don't love you, I love my destiny. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible says, ask for the ancient past and walk in it. I'll never forget one minister. I've, I've shared with you the story. That guy's ministry was grounded. Things were tight. There were all kinds of demonic things. But that guy would never accept that there was a demonic problem. No, no, there's nothing wrong. Nothing was happening. And one day he summoned courage to come for counseling. So as soon as he entered, I saw a spirit enter with him. And he just came, just sat down. And then he was telling me all kinds of things. Things are not exactly working, this and that. I said, my brother, I need to pray for you. Ah! Guy felt embarrassed, his stick, his ego, you know. And you know, we get deceived because you touch somebody and the person falls. You just believe that it means God has finished working on you. Is that true? And I was going to pray for the person. The last thing he could remember was that he got down on his knees. Right? Scattered the place, scattered the room. And I, I, I said, look at this. This is the same person who will argue and maybe insult me and write articles and write all kinds of things. This guy got up, went back to his ministry and boom! Goodness. How a man can sit down in ignorance for years. Whereas in two minutes of humility, your destiny can open up. How, how believers in the body have sat down in ignorance. Their salvation is closer to them than they can ever see. But it takes meekness to receive the word. You can be dying. There are families that can be dying in situations. Whereas the arm of the Lord is not short that it can save. What is keeping you from entering the next level of your life? Could it be that that brokenness, there is nothing wrong to accept that, oh, 
this is what I used to believe, but I've seen clearer now. Lord, help your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's hurry up. We are still talking about how to secure favor with God. We have to rush. Number two, you must have faith in God. You want to secure the favor of the state, the, um, the favor of God in your life. Remember, we are talking about favor with God. You must have faith in God. It's very important. James 5 verse 4 tells us this is the victory that overcomes. And it says, even our faith. You know what it means to have faith in God? I'm going to explain it to you. The first revelation of having faith in God is to trust Him. It's as simple as that. Trust Him. Don't complicate your faith experience. It means trust Him. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. But he says, in all your ways, not some, in all your ways, recognize him, acknowledge him. And his reward for your acknowledging him is that he will make straight your path. And then verse 7 says, it's a warning. He says, be not wise in your own understanding. Fear the Lord and turn away from him. Be not wise in your own understanding. That means you can feel you are wise in your own understanding. But it says, fear the Lord. And that fear of the Lord will make you turn away from evil. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh unto God must believe that He is, in other words, that He exists. And then number two, that He is the rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. It takes faith. Hallelujah. It takes faith in God. It takes faith in God. Very important. You must trust in the Lord. Psalms 125 verse 1. It said, They that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken. Hallelujah. Very important. They that trust in the Lord. When you have faith in God, it gives you stability. Through all of the boisterous winds that blow around our lives. Where are we? Okay, they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which shall not be removed or shaken, but abide forever. Do you trust in the Lord? What is faith first and foremost? Let me tell you. Faith is never faith until it can be seen or heard. Let me shock you right now. Faith is never faith until it can be seen or heard. Faith comes from the Greek word pistis. Hallelujah. What that means is your faith is your persuasion or conviction plus the corresponding action you take based on that conviction. Are you getting my point now? If you have not acted on faith, it's called belief. It's not called faith. Are you getting me? Belief is just your persuasion. When you act based on that belief, it becomes faith. So the Bible says, have faith in God. Become persuaded so much in the character of God that you take steps based on that conviction. So the equation of faith is revelation plus conviction or persuasion then plus corresponding action. Write it and never forget. Because faith comes when you hear the word of God. So it starts with revelation. Then that revelation brings conviction or persuasion. You are convinced about this reality you just heard about. Convinced enough to take steps. Then the Bible calls that Without the action component, it's called belief. What many people are doing that they call faith is belief. That means 
not acting on the word of God is the clearest proof that you don't trust God. Not acting on the word of God is the clearest proof, biblically, that you do not trust God. So many people hear the word of God and we claim to be convinced. Let me tell you, in this life, the moment you are convinced about a thing, action is almost automatic. Hallelujah. A guy sees a lady and thinks he likes her and he keeps nursing that persuasion until he pushes him to say, Sister, please, after Koinonia, I'll be at this door. Will you mind passing there? That's action. Three guys saw the lady and said, Wow, nice lady. I saw the way, you know, she's crying and she likes God praying. It's nice when he finally is praying. And that's all. He stopped and they all moved. But she was convinced and he said, Look, I'm going to take a step further. Right? And he meets the lady. And then they get married. What is that? Action. Whereas there is another brother who can say, Me, even me, God knows from the depth of my heart, this is my wife. And you watch. Somebody complete the equation and carry your wife. I just spoke about marriage. Some of you have woken up now. Ah! Brothers, you need this message before you carry any man's daughter to the altar. That statement you make at the altar is so implicating. It will take a long time for you to see the, the significance of that vow. Don't let your tithe deceive you. You are standing there just talking. Will you do this? Everybody you are just everybody are getting married. After the marriage, the robber will hit the road. Your eye will clear. My friend the Jimmy says, love is blind. But marriage will open your eyes. Praise God. So let's hurry up. Number three, I'm going to shock you now. You want to secure favor with God? The third principle is the tithe. T-I-T-H-E. Ah. How many of us have been taught in our churches and our different groups that tithe helps you to secure favor with God? Even those who have taught about tithe just preach about it because there are bills that need to be paid and they say you need to pay your tithe. If you don't pay your tithe, don't pay your tithe and see whether God will bless you. And you see the anger with which the man is preaching and God tells you, please, please. Every church, every ministry, their prosperity is dependent on their own obedience to the principles of the kingdom. My prosperity as a minister of the gospel is not dependent on koinonia people. Ah, that would have been a terrible way to live. I would have been frowning at you for every week. What did you drop last week? There are many men of God who are burdened to their congregation because they do not realize that their prosperity is tied to their own personal obedience. Can I be sincere with you? Many men of God don't tie. Hallelujah. Many men of God don't tithe. They teach tithing. Do you know how long it took me as a man of God to be consistent in tithing? I want to be sincere with you. You know I fear God and I honor God. When I saw how difficult it was to tithe, with all the fear that I had for God, I said, man, that means many people, somebody is lying somewhere in this equation. It takes the giving grace to come upon your life. One, two. It takes you designing a system to make your tithing efficient. Are you getting my point? You don't tithe just... No, no, no. no. The first thing I want you to understand about tithing is that tithing is not a debt you are paying. Many people come before God with tithe. Help me with one, one of these envelopes. And they, they bring the tithe. Thank you. Don't worry. They bring the tithe and they just stand frowning. Okay, God, please so you will not harass me. Take and once they pray, they say, let's wait, just drop it in the offering basket. Your tithe secures favor with God. You want to be on God's side, brothers and sisters. Not being on God's side is disastrous. It's not just about finances. There is a spirit called the devourer 
sits alive and active in the earth. Hallelujah. I must talk about this. Your tithe is not the payment of a debt because everything we owe belongs to God. Your tithe is an acknowledgement. It's a documentation of your gratitude. You're saying, Lord, in obedience to you and for your faithfulness, I bring 10%. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Let me kneel down. Look at me. I'm kneeling down. Snap me so that you see it on, on the dumb. I'm dummy with your phone. I'm pleading with you in the name of the Lord God. If you love God, I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ. Be consistent in your time. See, I'm getting down on my knees and I'm begging you. Ah, you've been snapping, you know, Joe. <laughs> okay, let me just hands up so that you know that I'm kneeling down. Be faithful. Don't think tithing is a gimmick by a preacher. I can tell you this. Ask the financial department. By the grace of God as a ministry, we do not owe God one man. I don't care what collection is made for what. The tithe of God. Before anything happens, you really think we are running this ministry from... The, look, you know what you are dropping in the offering basket. And if you don't know your neighbor's home, you know your own. Run ministry with things you are throwing. No. There is a mystery of divine supply. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You must believe this. I was sharing some of the testimonies with Pastor William. Benefits of tithing. I remember one time we were just praying and, and trusting God. There were things here and there to, 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 to get and all of that. And we were just saying, Oh Lord, we thank you because we are tithers, we are faithful. Till today, I was sharing with you, Pastor. Till today, we do not know the person. We just got an alert, 1.5 million, by an unknown person we do not know, into the ministry account. Whereas, that somebody's labor, somebody who is collecting 50,000, how much is his salary that calculated for more than one year? For being safe in life. I think I was talking to the protocol department. They went to purchase something in Abuja. And then I was talking to them. The mixer. We just got a better mixer, a very good one. And then I, I was talking to them. I think it was someone on my birthday. Pastor. Someone just, right? Yes. And the person just said, ah, they just paid some money for their family that they were hoping, you know, 3.4 million naira. And the person just said, oh, well, thank God for all the words you are speaking, the things you are teaching us, and was just sending the tithe and all of that. Let me tell you, when you see what we are doing, because I know many of you sit and wonder, how do these people really get money? Yes, yeah, God is faithful, but what is the one plus one of it? Let me tell you, the one plus one of it is what I am teaching you here. The tithe. If you are not a faithful tithe, God is not authorized to bless you. Stop wasting your time in praying and fasting for wealth. If you are not a titan, I want you to know the devourer will stand and stare at your face. If you like, put a Bible on your head. Prayer is not the seed for financial breakthrough. Prayer is the seed for fellowship with the Spirit and spiritual awakening and the presence of God and activating the anointing, not prosperity. Your tithe, your giving are the seed for increase. Many people who want to be blessed will argue this thing. And you ask the person, how much do you have? How much has entered your hand that you are arguing, you are saying it's not correct? It's a terrible thing when you don't have results and you are still arguing. Blessed is he who comes. In the name of us, blessed is he who comes in the name of us. When you pay your tithe, you are securing favor with God. Please and please and please teach this to anyone you love and make up your mind from today. Your tithe is a tenth portion, one tenth of your income. 
that secures open heaven. Favor with God. Tithe because it guarantees God's continuous favor in your life. Oh, I don't want to be outside of the favor of God. It's dangerous. It's a risky position. It's like being face to face with the lion. Imagine how many devils of darkness will want on their own to destroy my life. I found a place of refuge. I found a way of walking under an open heaven. Do you know the wickedness? The arrows that fly by day. The noisome pestilence. Do you know how many people want to see your downfall? If there is no spiritual way of keeping yourself standing, you will fall like a leaf. Are you getting what I'm saying? How many people use all their money for sickness? All their money for no, no open heaven. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I make up my mind to be faithful in tithing. Say it again in the name of Jesus. See, the truth is many of us are not consistent. Our tithing life is up, down, up, down. That's why today it looks like some doors of favor open up and then tomorrow. It's not God's fault. J.C. Penny, many of you have heard about him. J.C. Penny, one of the multi-billionaires who love God. He was tithing and at a point something happened and he said he wanted to experiment with God. He stopped tithing. That was how his business just was died like that. To a point that he was almost crashing. And he said, wow. And he started tithing. And that was how he, he got himself back. You better believe what I'm telling you. Many of our parents do not tithe from their salary. They are collecting 150000 Yes, they cannot afford 5000 You ask them for 5000 they will almost kill you. Because a devourer has eaten everything. In one day, two tires just patched. And all the money has gone. Just when you are coming, something happens. Arrows that fly by day. And they now look and they say, Sorry, you need, you need this and that. You will be spent and all the money goes. Then, the moment the money goes, the person gets well by himself. A devourer. And you are praying and fasting and conducting night vigils and running around your father in the night rather than obedience that is better than sacrifice. Many of us can prefer to run marathon prayers from 11 to 6 to try to solve something that faithfulness in time. Many of our fathers have got predicaments upon the family because they are not faithful in time. A solid building, a solid structure all rain just comes and washes everything just when they wanted to finish his thing. Back to square one. There are even those that physical money disappears. Have you heard that story? Somebody keeps one million, he comes back and finds 780,000. Someone came for counseling. I've never had that thing. The woman said, Rat, eat her money. No, serious. I'm, I'm not joking. I'm not joking at all. Rat. You come in the morning and you see pieces of what sort of devil type. I think it was either Paul Enentio or, or Bishop David Oyeriko that shared something that some armed robbers came and they were going to, de I think, um, destroy a woman or capture one family. And the woman shouted, she took her tight booklet, lifted it up and dropped it on the ground and said, God, watch the people match this booklet and come and touch me at once. Confusion came on the people. They were afraid and that was how they left. Brothers and sisters, what you do not believe will not work for you. Oh, I believe the word of God. I'm that minister of the gospel that believes every word of Jesus. Are you getting blessed? Leviticus 27 verse 30. Let's finish up on the issue of time very quickly. Leviticus 27 verse 30. Let me show you how the devil has been cheating many of us. Tithe heals you from grief. Everyone let's read. One to read. It's the Lord. 
and it is holy unto God. So when I take my tithe, I say, Lord, I'm documenting my gratitude. I honor you. I thank you. How many of our parents receive some money? Maybe one money that is spending, it just comes in, seven million, and they just calculate. Use calculator, seven hundred thousand me. Go and give that man of God. I'm not stupid. Abba, seven hundred thousand. And you see the person arguing. And within three weeks, he has spent over one million naira on his health. And robbers will come and put a gun and say, We saw through the jazz that we use that there's seven million in this. I say, No, it's only four. So now slap you say, Truly, it's, it's seven. Where is it? Say, That's it here. Take it, take it, and preserve my life. Whereas the tithe of it. Have you seen how many of our family members put us in trouble? I say this, many of us keep wondering, why is my father working? Why is my mother working? The truth is that they are all working. They've never been driven from job, but not even a house to build. The mysteries of the kingdom. There is no favor. The heavens are closed. So many believers operating under closed heaven. There are many ministries. They are so tight, no supply. They beg for everything. Squeeze people, put people, workers and all of that under every kind of pressure. Because the man of God is not tithing. The people are not tithing. The ministry is not tithing. Dr. Mike Mudok was sharing and he said there was a time the finance of his ministry was going down. It was going down so bad and he checked. And then he called the finance department. He said something is wrong. We are not doing something right. What is wrong? Hallelujah. And the financial secretary said, Well, sir, um, for about three months now, we've not been paying tithes because the bills are enormous. And honestly, if we have to pay tithes, you may, we may shut you down from TV and all of that. And my brother said, Because of that, you stop paying the tithes. That means we are going to crash to zero. The day we stop paying tithes as a ministry, I give you one to two months. It will never happen. That's why I have the confidence to say. Maybe one day you come and you just see no fuel for generating. Or no tears. Ah! No. As surely as the God of heaven lives. We have created a system that does not depend on our personal emotions again. Is someone learning something? Is your heavens open? Pastor, is your heaven open? Over your family. There are many people who do not tithe. They pay school fees. 250 naira. The, the child, brilliant boy, is coming back with one dull result. 0, 0, 0, 0, 39, 41. That's the average. What is happening? All kinds of witchcraft activities flying freely. Because the heavens are closed. Are you getting blessed with what I'm saying? You want to secure favor with God? You must be faithful. We've not talked about favor with men. No. And that's really where I want to dwell tonight. That's why I'm rushing. I'm not teaching on finances. So I'll stop here for you. We're going to pray. Just in one minute before we continue. Many of us need to repent. Because the financial stress in our family is not because of the job. It's not. It's not because they didn't promote your father. I'm telling you the truth. If we don't take responsibility, we will keep giving. It's easy to blame people for our financial predicament. Are you getting my point? It's so easy. If that they promoted me, I would have been collecting 200,000 now. Instead of 150, my life would have been better. So wrong. So wrong. You collect one million under a closed heaven and you will see the way the devil will make a caricature of your life. Lift up your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I repent. Be sincere with yourself. Some of us need to pray on behalf of our families. Please be sincere. Lord, I've not been faithful, Titan. I don't know what it is, oh God, but I find out that it's so hard. I've not had the revelation. I'm not yet convinced. I think it's a gimmick by a man of God or a ministry. I think it's just a gimmick. Koinonia is trying to squeeze out money from me. No. 
Go ahead and pray. Because there are many of us, no matter how many miracle services you come, I'm telling you, the heavens are closed. The heavens are closed. There is no favor with God. That's why the doors that were opened before, they are not even open again. Be sincere with yourself. There were strange manifestations of favor from God. They are not even here again. Your shop that used to sell, nothing is selling again because you think you don't touch for your business. Now the heavens are closed. Look at many of our parents. You buy a new gadget, you bring the machine, everything breaks down. This is the devourer, brothers and sisters. Let's take responsibility tonight and say, Lord, we cry for help. The finance of families are finished because of paying for drugs and sicknesses. Paying for damaged cars. Paying for all kinds of things. Pray and say, Lord, I want your favor. From tonight I repent. I receive the giving grace to be a delight some tighter. I realize that this is the key. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you read. I don't care what your level of anointing is. I don't care how hard in your heart is. If you want to experience favor with God, I'm telling you one of the keys is you must be a consistent tighter. You must design a system around your life. If there are needs in your life, that's the more, that's, that's the more reason to tie. Don't say the needs are too much. Man of God, is because you don't know. I have so much need. I must do this and that. Touch your way out of that trouble. Touch your way out of that trouble. Eating your time will only get you deeper. I promise you, you can apply every business principle you know. Fail to tithe and watch the devourer scatter your life and your family. But you be faithful towards tithing and watch God turn any situation around. It doesn't take time. Commit God into your life. Anything God is involved in must succeed. Many of us, God is not committed in the affairs of our lives. I don't want to know what you are going through now. Fight your way out of it. Secure the favor of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please let me challenge you. Create a system. If you do internet banking, you can have the account details of the ministry or whatever else. If you share, you type the, the, the ministry's account details are available to it. If you do internet banking, transfer it immediately. Otherwise, buy envelopes. Buy envelopes. I always have a stack of envelopes. Praise God. The treasurer is here. We created a system. I don't even see the type. As it is counted, we take it and, 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 and show it to the appropriate ministry. Brothers and sisters, please listen to me. Are you not tired of what you have seen your loved ones go through? Didn't they go to school? Didn't they get all the degrees? Look at everything. See how helpless people are. Because they know not, neither will they understand. And the Bible says they grow in darkness and the earth is out of course. Let's finish the last part. How do you activate and secure favor with men? I must talk about this. Spoke about three things right now. To secure favor with God. That number one, you must have the fear of God. The fear of the Lord. Number two, you must have faith in God. You must trust Him. Number three, you must be a consistent titan. But when it comes to finding favor with men, the rule is different. If you have been sleeping, this is the time to wake up. I believe with all my heart that your destiny depends on this revelation I'm sharing tonight. Daniel chapter 1. Open our eyes, O oh God. Daniel chapter 1. 
help us. Grant us grace. Someone is walking in undeniable realms of favor after today. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to share with you something very powerful. How do you secure favor with men? In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. Verse 2. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of China, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure of his God. Verse 3. And the king, listen now, spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel. So the king is inviting some people to stand before the king. Hallelujah. And the king, and of the king's seed, and of the princes. Verse 4. Everyone read. One, two, read. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability, take note, in them to stand in the king's palace. It takes an ability. Are you seeing that? It said those who have what? Ability to stand in the king's palace. And whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the child here. Let's stop there. Look up. There is a mystery to securing favor with men. And I want you to get this very straight. There were many people who were captured. But notice what Nebuchadnezzar said. He said there are a kind of people I want. The king that we captured now. I want all the people that walked in his palace. Because they have been trained according to the life of royalty. Bring them. I want certain choice guys that came from Israel. There were certain things that the eunuchs were looking at. Brothers and sisters, there is a price to secure favor with men. Can I tell you something? Favor is the currency to get money. Think about what I said very carefully. Favor is the currency to get money. Write this down, please. The ultimate key to entering the realm of favor with men. Never forget this for as long as you live. If you pay attention to this, we will celebrate together as the great ones in the future. But you neglect this, you will be part of those quarreling, those who will be the great ones. Listen. The ultimate key to entering the realm of favor with men is to possess the ability to provide solutions and solve their problems. Write it down. The ultimate key, I'll say it again, to entering the realm of favor with men is to possess the ability to solve their problems and provide solutions. Oh, Shiva Vatalama. Write this down. Solve problems. Then write three elixirs. Provide solutions. Let's discuss this briefly. When I solve this, we'll tie it up by showing you how God announces men in the kingdom. The ultimate key, brothers and sisters, hear me. Every man in scripture who became great, became great because he was favored. He found favor with men. And every man who found favor with men had something to exchange for that favor. Is someone getting what I'm saying? Joseph would have died in the prison if he never had the ability to interpret dreams. 
Daniel would never rise to reign in a strange land through the dispensation of three kings if he had no ability to solve problems. I say this all the time and some of us neglect it. Write that word down, ability. Ability. This is your key to finding favor with men and entering the realm of greatness. Gender notwithstanding. Background notwithstanding. Age notwithstanding. Nationality notwithstanding. Hallelujah. Until you solve a problem, you remain insignificant and unnoticed. If you are not providing solutions, brothers and sisters, nobody needs you. The world is so desperate for solutions, they will only run towards the direction of those who are solving problems. The greater problems you solve, the greater you become magnetic. Please understand this. If you think you will, people will invite you into their presence just because they like you or because you are a Christian, you are dreaming. Wake up. Hello? <laughs> you know, many of us have this funny understanding. That because I'm serving God, one day, great men will call me. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Start reading your Bible very carefully. And you will find out that no great man appeared before the king just like that. There was an ability that qualified him to stand before the king. I have a question. What will qualify you to stand before men who can honor you? And bring you into greatness. Are you getting my point? The reason why you may be insignificant as you think is because your ability has not brought you to a position of notoriety. Please hear, me, hear what I'm saying. All men are equal, but their graces and abilities separate them and make certain things possible for others. Your ability, that anointing, that skill, that grace, that gift is what you will use to access favor with men. There are people today by the grace of God who have come to see me. And I know that if not for the grace of God, there is nothing I will have in exchange for the level of the honor of those people. Not at this level of my life. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are offices and places that I access today and bump into those people and I know the level of great men in themselves who cannot access those offices. The gift of a man can make room for him and bring him before great men. Your gift can add to your age. Your gift can qualify you where you do not qualify. And the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. We must understand this, then I will show you how God leads people in the kingdom. Say, in the name of Jesus, I have an ability that will bring me before great men. Say one more time, in the name of Jesus, I have an anointing, I have grace, I have an ability that will bring me before great men. I have entered places today that my father may never enter, perhaps. I have entered places today that with all humility, my contemporaries maybe may never enter their lifetime. Because of the gift of God. And look, when you possess this ability, 
They told Jesus, they said, all men seek for thee. All men, they will pay you for it. They will pay you in millions and think it's a privilege that they are honoring you. And you will be surprised. You're wondering, my goodness, but there is an ability. And because they need it, they will look for you. There are 7 billion people in the earth. But more than 90% of those people are looking for solutions. That's big business, brother. If you can become a solution provider, you become magnetic. See the darkness in Nigeria. Look, let me tell you. If you have a ministry that spits saliva on people's face and they get you, spit it on 20 people and let them get you. And you will see the level of intelligent people who will come and stand for days waiting to be healed. Many of us do not know the level of darkness that is upon the earth. Please listen. The Spirit of God is moving in this place right now because I, I want to share something very powerful. There is an anointing you have that can bail you forever. There is an anointing. The ability that makes you to stand before kings. You will not be the one looking for them. The Gentiles will come. Not to you. To your life. That's what they want. Not you. If you think people come because they like you. There are many people who come for Koinonia not because they like me. You will be amazed to see how many people came to Jesus. King of the Jews. You are this and that. When it looked like Jesus' ministry was no diving, they say, I beg, crucify him, let his blood even be upon our head. Please listen, let me just advise you. If you think you have a crowd or people love you because of you, there are very few people in your lifetime who will love you because of your personality. Many people will love you because of what you carry. Are you getting my point? There is this treasure in earthen vessels. So that you will end some things in your life. I will never be a failure in this life forever. I know it. I know it. Rich men have problems that I can solve. Ah, yes. Yes. Great men have problems that I can solve. I cannot solve every problem. But brothers and sisters, there are problems I can solve. Now, watch this. Let me explain to you the equation, what I call the equation of greatness. You will be so blessed. Just give me a few minutes and we'll pray now. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 1, media, project it. I love the Lord. When I did this study, my heart dropped. I said, oh God, I'm sorry for all the times that I kept blaming you for so many things. Ecclesiastes 9. Eleven. But eleven. Did I say one? Eleven, please. But eleven. Everybody, please read. I returned and saw under the that the race is not to the sweet, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. This is the mystery we are about to discuss now. Everybody read it. But time and chance. I want to show you the mystery of greatness. Listen. Repeat this last clause again. One to go. Time. One more time. But time and chance Happens to who? How many? Everybody. Now replace the word chance. Where are we now? Okay, but time and chance. Replace the word chance with opportunity. Are you ready now? One to read. I want you to replace the word time with the word season. Are you ready now? One to read. But seasons... And opportunities happen to them all. 
but season. Like the hand of a clock. It has been designed by the sovereign act of God that for every man upon the surface of the earth, there is the turning of the hand of the clock and that one day, time and opportunity will always happen to them. Ah. Holy Spirit. Did the Bible say it happens to some? Happens to everybody. That means there is a guarantee. Please listen. Somebody's deliverance is coming. There is a guarantee based on the word of God that a day must come if God is God. Where time and chance. You know how they do cooperative society. Five of us bring 20,000. 20, it's now your own turn. It's now your own turn. And I start smiling, although it's not my turn. Because I know that my turn is coming for sure. And the Bible says, time and chance. So in the equation of greatness, we are bringing the constant factors. And then we work on the variables. We are doing a little mathematics here. Are you getting my point? It says, time and chance. This one, no devil can stop it. No other is from your village. You don't need to pray about it. He said, time, if you are under the sun, time and time happiness to them. Ah, I show you a mystery. Ah, so time, that means a time will come in my life, whether I'm prepared or not, whether I pray for it or not, whether I fast for it or not. A time will come where the hand of God will navigate opportunities. Whether I see it or not is irrelevant. God's justice must be done. Therefore, the Bible for once us is a redeeming the time. Now that you know that a day will come, this is where a lot of people miss it. We keep focusing on looking at the day. The Bible says it will come. Remove that in the equation of your preparation for greatness. And begin to focus on taking advantage of that day. It will come. The equation of greatness. Let's look at. Um, okay. Greatness therefore. In the kingdom. Comes. By number one. God. Margin seasons and opportunities together. And then number two. You finding favor. By securing that opportunity. I'm going to explain myself. Let me have somebody please. Okay, everyone come. Hallelujah. Watch this. Let's assume this is spiritual timing. And according to God's justice system. Okay, stand here Aaron. That this time is going to keep moving. Are you seeing it now? And that a day will come. It may take a long time. But that a day is going to come. When it will come to Aaron. And if Aaron misses on that opportunity. It will keep moving again. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why if God wants to help you in life, He restores years, not what you lost. Yes. He tries to bring back the time so that the mistake you made, you can remedy it. He never said, I will restore the good because they are not necessary. Once there is time and those seasons, is somebody understanding what I'm saying? Now, the problem with the body of Christ is that we all sit down being distracted at looking at the clock and waiting for the day it gets to our turn rather than getting busy to sharpen that ability so that the day the time comes you will enter the presence of greatness once and never come out again forever. Every man in the scripture that became great waited for that Kairos moment. 
Joseph was in the prison, but he knew there is an ability to interpret things. It's only a matter of time. The brothers told him, he said, no problem. Pharaoh's wife lied that he wanted to rape her. No problem. They threw him in the prison. But when the season comes, that part of the equation is God that starts moving. That's favor with God. Are you seeing that now? God made it in such a way that the white presser had to do something wrong to go to the prison. So while he was in the prison, the divine transaction started happening. And the white presser came out. Although the white presser forgot about him, but a day came. Let me tell you, it does not take two days for you to enter greatness. Read the Bible. It's always happening one day. There is always a day called one day. He said, John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. There is, John was sharpening himself in the wilderness. When the season came, he came out and he completed his assignment one time. Jesus for 30 years was preparing for a season of three years. 30 years. Read all the books, knew all the law, did everything and there was flawless victory within three and a half years. So there are many of us sitting down, looking at people's cars and say, man, I like this Jeep. Goodness. Ah! BMW, this and that. Ford Explorer 2014. Limited edition. Look at that foolishness. We are there claiming. I claim it. Time and chance. Your turn is soon coming. Create an urgency. Sharpen the knife. Sharpen the anointing. Sharpen the healing anointing. One day. See, let me tell you. You may say there are many people. The Bible says in Israel, there were many widows, but to none was the prophet sent. God will send people specifically to you. And when you take advantage of that season, that is it. You are open to a dimension of grace. I have studied almost every great ministry I admire. And I found out that in the history of that ministry, something always happened. Something happened at a Kairos season. And the men plunged into it with revelation. And boom, never to return again. Are you, are you getting what I'm sharing with you? Ah, I feel the anointing of the Spirit. If you sit down and you are wondering, Kai, this house, one day we are coming. When will this come? No, no, no. You never see me bother. You insult yourself when you do that. Many young people here, our dream is car, right? Car. Let me buy car. And you are trying to save. How much can you save for the car you want? I'm teaching you a higher law. Get out of all those, those, those ways of frustration and misery. That's why many people cannot give God glory. They suffer for everything in their life. Come and adopt the kingdom's way. There is a higher dimension. There is a higher way. Believe me. Look, let me tell you. I'm a businessman. I've read many business books. So don't you think I'm just talking nonsense? I know what I'm saying. Hallelujah. When that Kairos moment comes in your life, when it comes in your ministry, some people are snoring through the night. The time will pass. They wake up and an opportunity that took 10 years has just passed. Before it will come back again, the first son is graduating from the university. He has not learned his lesson. After 25 years, it comes again. Prophecy comes. In the name of Jesus, let restoration happen. And by the mercy of God, the time is reversed. It comes again. The same lack of preparation keeps bringing people down. Are you seeing why it takes more than receiving to walk in this land? You would thank me in the future for what I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you the way to a superior life. So that you stop blaming your parents and say, if my father only accepted this job, stupid man would have been out of this. Uh uh-uh. Leave your father alone. God is bringing you to a point. I don't care what degree you graduated with. I don't care there is a problem. Listen, if you solve a millionaire's problem, you have access to his million. It's as simple as that. I'm 
never be a failure in this life. Never. So every time I spend in prayer, I'm sharpening my gifting for that day. A day will come when that season comes. God will send a great man who can sow a seed of 100 million naira to Koinonia. The person will be dying of tuberculosis or something. It's like that. That's how it works. There is always something you can exchange for. And God will make it in such a way that on the day he's coming, somebody will be bringing koinonia messages. That one is God's part of the equation. While that is happening, I'm praying in the secret place. Greater wisdom, oh God. You can sleep in the night and not know that that is the last time you will sleep in that realm. Hi. If Joseph knew... If Joseph knew, all the people in the prison would have cleaned his shoe and said, Oh God, it is within your bail me. Imagine the guy that bought Joseph. When he was shaving Joseph, little did he know. He would have earned himself a position forever. Imagine those who were with the pri- in the prison with Obas and John. The night he would come out. If they had known that he would just come out never to return, they would have said, Oh God, sir, let's pray. Father, bless this man. So that at least he will remember them. Beware of people that you keep mocking and say you are not this. You can't speak English very well. You can't do this and that and that. Beware, let me tell you. You know why? Because if you are not, if you don't take time. Please look at me. Let's just focus. God is just doing his thing. If, if, you are, if you don't pay attention, can I tell you the truth? A day will come. You will find out that the same person you saw today. You looked at her, said, Mary, what is there? You will open an office that you feel from for two weeks. There are people today who are angry with me. They are angry with me because there were times when we could access one another. And at those times they could say a lot of things. Call me when they wanted. But I was doing something they were not doing. We were all laughing and joking. And today, because of the difficulty in reaching me, they pick offense. It's not my fault. I refuse to remain at that level. I intend to grow. Be nice to people today. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, for those of you who look at people in Koinonia, and when we say greet one another, you just turn. You don't know who you are turning. Time and chance. He may come from a poor family. He may have one ton standards. But let me tell you, time, the word you are sharing is sharpening you for that time. A day will come. There is something God has put in you. This is the justice of God. This is why every man can be great. Time and chance happen to them all. The day it happened to our parents, they were not prepared. They were there talking about others criticizing others and the clock passed and it went to one drunkard who just got born again and saw the time took advantage of it and they said ah, is this not the boy on campus that was drinking he was drinking but he did something with his opportunity now he's a billionaire he's a pastor he's advancing the kingdom let me tell you something that happened in 2000 and Eight, I believe. I was in Accra for a retreat. And something happened. Hallelujah. No, I think 2007 or so. I was in Accra for a retreat. Praying and seeking the face of God. For the things that he was going to do. And while I was praying. My money had finished. I had nothing. Not even to eat. Not even to pay for the hotel where I was having the retreat for that night. I finished praying. I was reading a book within the gate. The divine revelation book. When I read it, the spirit of God just told me stroll around. And I came out, I started strolling. I was walking like a fool. Time and chance. I want to share with you testimonies now. The Holy Ghost just said, just keep walking. I was walking like a fool. I didn't know where I was going. Up to 25 minutes, I was just walking. The next thing I saw a time boy. Welcome to Accra City Campus. And the Holy Ghost said, enter. Immediately I entered. The first person I'll meet is the SRC president. And the guy, listen, the guy looked at me. And the moment he looked at me, he said, how are you, sir? When he shook me, he just took his hand. He said, Jesus. He said, can you come to my office? Miracle number one. Listen, listen. 
true story. I want to tell you I know what I'm saying. I'm not just making noise. When this guy brought me to the office, we didn't speak more than five minutes. He started shaking. Time and chance. And they ordered a meal. I first ate the meal. And then we attended their fellowship. I sat down quietly. After they attended their just like the campus has Friday fellowship. When they finished, I went to his office. Watch this. The moment I started talking, I started talking at about two four. We rounded up that meeting past nine. When we started talking, the university expo started coming to the office one by one. They would come. This one would fall under the anointing and remain there. It was in that place I inaugurated the prayer group that prays for the campus in Accra. In that Accra city campus. On that day, I'm still in touch with that gentleman. Again, his life changed. There was, they have their prophets like their, maybe what you would call an FCS president. Yes, after the, the, the president would finish, he invited me again to Accra and I went to minister in a program. And it was a powerful and explosive program. I was even on radio. The radio and they did an interview. I think that was when we traveled with Bala, Alex and a team of other people. Listen, that's not the whole story. When I finished that night, the people came together that night. They raised an offering of maybe equivalent in Naira now, of maybe 30,000. And they did me. I didn't even know how to find my way back. They directed me. I found my way, paid for that night, and I ate a very good meal. I said, it was. I remember in the room I was screaming. I said, come on. Not, it has equal value in any land. You don't need to know nobody. All this Godfather nonsense. Let me tell you. Get out of it right now. If God is on your side, there is nothing, nothing you cannot get. Listen. The night I was supposed to leave, those guys started crying because they would come and visit me in my hotel. It was within three or four days, their life changed. They said, what sort of person? I taught them on the kingdom. It was an unusual open heaven. So the last day they invited me again. I prayed with them, strengthened all the people, you know, blessed them. They had impartations and all of that. And they raised me money again. An equivalent of maybe say 50,000. And then I returned back. Who would have helped me? I don't have any uncle but the gift of a man. The time and chance is God's own equation. Leave it for him. God is speaking to someone tonight. You have been crying and say, Lord, when will it come? God said, forget about the issue of when. Are you prepared? Are you seeing that God delaying seasons is an act of his love? That thing you have been calling delay. You are not prepared. If it had come before this message, you would have blown it only for it to come back 10 years. You open a shop, nobody's coming. God is saying, uh uh, I don't want you to miss. Be careful what you call delay. Some things may be the hand of God. Your job, you didn't get the job. God said, I, I don't want you to struggle. There is something you can know. You go for a job, in four months, you have become one of the executives. It does not take time. If you can solve the problem, you will rise to the top. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait. But while I wait, I will sharpen the knife. I will pray in tongues. While I wait, I will keep studying the word. I know I'm going to stand before kings. I must have content to give them. I will talk like I'm talking before weak men. I will stand before presidents. A day will come. It will be a privilege to air koinonia. A day will come. We will not just have one or two TV stations. There will be many. One billionaire can sponsor it for years. But while that time comes, we will pray. We will fast. We will travel. Let them call you a fool because there's no car. What is car? See, a man came to Mike Murdoch because of something that he did. He was begging Mike Murdoch to buy a car for him. Mike Murdoch said, I don't need it. He said, I, I entered a covenant with God that every year till you die, I'll be buying you the latest Benz car. One day I was passing around Abuja and I saw all the mighty houses they were building around my Tama. And the Holy Ghost told me, do you know how many of your houses are here? No, I'm serious. 
God told me, He said, you will only build in life just for the formality, the gift of a man. The owner of that building will need me one day. Darkness is a mystery that announces life. The world will be too dark one day. They will need the anointing. They will need it. I'm telling you, many of you have not been respecting what you carry. I know what I carry. I know what I carry. It's an anointing of the Spirit. The nations can never, 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 they can never deny the effect. They may not like me, but there is an anointing. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, I'm fasting, I may believe, I may so carry, but there is an anointing. My father could not enter, but there is an anointing. There is wisdom, there is the gift of God. And I will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. There is a price to pay. I don't blame anybody for where I am. I take responsibility. Stop insulting people for where you are. Take responsibility. I fear the Lord. I have faith in Him. I'm a tiger. I'm sure that I have favor with God. That means arranging the seasons is, is a done deal. What is left now is to sharpen my ability. I, I may not speak the kind of English you want, but when I say it, an anointing will leave. You can deny my English, but you cannot deny the anointing. There is something, see, this is what I'm training you to become. There is a sharpening. You may not see it now. The world will need you. You will collect a salary of maybe 100,000 for your boss who sow a seed of 5 million to get out of trouble. Your ability, listen, we are soon going to pray. Your ability to maximize the moment opens you up to untold realms of greatness. Look at me. Aaron is here. Let me share with you his testimony. Permit me Aaron a bit. For years, many of you know how skilled Aaron is. For years, the kind of job he was trusting God for would not come. I know times when things will get a bit painful for him. And we kept encouraging he will be listening to the word of God. But time and chance, a season just came, brothers and sisters, supernaturally. He got a job. Two, he got connected with the deputy governor of Kaduna State. Within how many months, Aaron? That they, within two months, they moved him to go and head a unit in Joss. Now he heads a unit in Joss. And we are only counting. See, I think there's one of our ladies here. Two of our ladies that I know. The moment they graduated, they've not even served. They just called them to get jobs. You may not value what you are receiving. Don't let anybody fool you and make you think you are wasting your time. A day will come. The price you are paying now is what your colleagues will be paying in the future. You are already paying it now. You may look like a fool. Some of you, as you are going back home now, they will insult you and say, we are not seeing the fruit. It does not yet appear. But time and chance will reveal that I'm not praying in tongues for nothing. Hallelujah. This year, let me give you the last story and then we'll pray. This year, I was in Ibadan. We, were, we all went to Ibadan. And when we went, they lodged us in one of the best hotels there. And it was Yerima, Victor, and um, Sam. They sent me a text in the afternoon. They said, we are swimming and we are enjoying. And then I looked through my window. They were playing table tennis. They were swimming. You know, they were enjoying themselves. All snapping and enjoying. And I looked. And then I remember the story. That same hotel, listen. In 2007, I went to that same hotel for something. But I could not pay for any room. Because it was very expensive. Listen to me. I still had the anointing. But time and season had not come. I went there. 
I still saw the arrangement. I sat down there. There's a reception there. Brothers and sisters, I was looking for a place around that vicinity where they were doing night vigil. It was a Friday night. So I will attend the night vigil because I had no money. If I touch anything, I will not have my transport back. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That same hotel. Somebody would have looked at me and said, Oh, what failure. Hiya. Mistake. Big mistake. You don't need to respond to those who think you are failure. Because you went to the board and you saw five carryovers. And the devil says, See, tell him, No, you see. Just keep watching. Time. 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 Yes, you may have an extra year. Write it and move. And thank God because in that extra year, you are still moving ahead. See, if a plane is moving forward, even if you go back to the rest, you are still moving forward. Because the plane carrying you is moving forward. I stayed that night till morning. No bathing, no nothing. And a few years later, there is a protocol of people together with the wife of the police commissioner of the state. We came and we sat with this woman. We are still going back, I think some, sometime towards the year. We are still going back to our place again. This woman was astonished. The things that God did in, in Ibadan was amazing. The woman followed us to our hotel room and we kept talking to him almost, I think, to 12 or past 12. And she brought, she said she must show her husband. Her husband is one of the top police people. Praise God. And she, they recorded everything me prophesying and praying for her. And she said she must meet her husband. And she just brought out a check, I think a check of 30,000 or something. She said, sorry, you man of God, this is small. But can you take this? I said, oh Lord, time and chance. It's not like I prayed more. I just kept doing what I was doing. It, when, when your season comes, the same thing you did that did not produce results will now produce amazing results. There are miracles that happen in Koinonia here that if we were on air, people will already start traveling for time and chance. Don't worry, a day will come. Stop trying to announce yourself. There are many people on air getting millions of naira. They don't have up to half of Sam's anointing. Continue what you are doing. Time and chance. A day will come. God will arrange your destiny helpers in front. Then they will give you 10 minutes to lead prayer. That's the day God will announce you. In 10 minutes, what the Spirit of God will do, you will have more than 20 invitations. Come for our conference. Come for this. You are reading business books. You are preparing yourself. It looks like you are a fool. There is nothing working. No office. Only knowledge. People even call you big head. Don't worry. A day will come. Unto none of the widows was, was, um, was Elijah. Oh, how did he put it now? Was the prophet sent. Except that widow of Zarephath. But the question God is asking you tonight before we pray. When the season comes, when the season comes, are you sharpened enough to make that your last season in that realm? Will you make the words of your critics become a self-fulfilling prophecy? Or will you contend? They may be seeing the brother and sister pray and they say, hey, you could know what you are doing, don't worry. You don't need to answer anybody. Just keep praying. A day came we were doing this same thing, but it was at the back of chapel. No Facebook to capture the picture and show the world that there is a hand of God upon these people. But a day will come. So I stopped focusing about cars. Nonsense. How? No. Leave all those things from today I'm teaching you. When you sit with friends and they say, oh boy, when now, when will our level change? Just know that they are wasting your time. Time and chance. It never announces to you that the day is coming. You will just sleep in the prison one night. And by the second night, you are in a palace you cannot account for. What brought me here? Oh, I believe it for somebody. 
I believe it for somebody. Let me bring a word for somebody. You may be going through certain things. You are killing the lion in the secret nobody knows. You are killing the bear nobody knows. A day will come. God will put you in front of Goliath. And it will be in the presence of all Israel. On that day, Saul will know that there is a David. Some of you have anointings today that it is to be revealed. The world will run away. Don't look for premature manifestations. Let me tell you, service is the best way to train yourself and sharpen yourself. You see, all these things people say, I won't play keyboard till they pay me. You are being foolish. You can serve now and they give you prayers and you make blunders. At least the mistake was made in Jerusalem before you now get to Judea and Samaria and make blunders there. Make the mistake here. Sing and go off to here. We will laugh at you alone and we will tap your back. There are mistakes that great men don't make in the open. No. Make it here. Make it here. Sharpen that knife. Who is God speaking to tonight? Because I sense in my spirit that we are at the edge. I cannot tell you. Trust me. I'm not speaking nonsense. I know it in my spirit. I've been telling you this for days. I have been fasting and preparing for this season. I have, I have picked the signal that believers in this side of God's kingdom, there is a dimension of, there is a suffer that will blow in this season. And let me tell you, warriors will arise. This, I call it the Zaria experience. We will reproduce this thing in this country. Many people do not know what God is doing in this side of the kingdom. You just finish your school, wear your convocation gown, or sit back. A day will come, God will say, your season in Zaria is over. It's time to move. Like arrows, like arrows in a man's quiver, he will send you. You will wreak havoc across the seven mountains. That day will come. Pay the price now. Forget the name. You don't need to be called an apostle, or pastor, or prophet. It's irrelevant. Settle down. Hallelujah. That's why, see, listen. Let me tell you one secret about my life. I shared it with the School of Ministry students. You never see me in broad daylight just roaming around foolishly. No. If you see me around, there was something to do. You never, that you are walking on the street, you just see me jumping around and say, uh, Con or Mace, which one is hot? No. I'm preparing for such an extraordinary life. I want my life to match the visions that I've seen in the Spirit. Call me Apostle. Thank God for the healings. I won't be deceived. I want to carry the word of the Lord with such a razor sharp accuracy. So I will stay in the presence. I will fast. I will pray. Let me be lean today, no problem. It doesn't kill. It doesn't kill. Prayer doesn't kill. Don't be a fool. The suffering of the future is what kills. The price today doesn't kill. There's no job. Instead of praying and lamenting, be preparing and say, I know a job will come. The day they do that interview, they won't just give you a job. They will promote me at once because they will say, Where have you been? Rise up on your feet. My spirit is fired up. Please jump up on your feet. I'd like you to begin to blast in tongues. Instrumentalists, come up. Everybody, come on. From the depths of your spirit. Do it for your future. Time and time happens to you. The day will come. Your season of appearing. Your season of appearing. Reket to Pokoteba. Don't be tired. Don't be tired. Man of God. Don't be tired. Woman of God. Don't be tired. Prophet of God. Don't be tired. Apostle of God. Don't be tired. 
Receive blessings. Sharpen the anointing. Sharpen the skill. Sharpen the gift. yourself into two. Find a brother or sister that is ready to pray. And say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to build, to sharpen that ability as I wait for that day. Come on, pray, Koinonia. The day will come. The day will come. Manifestation and destruction. Many of us want to be known. It's not fair. I'm anointed. Give me prayers to pray. I'm anointed. Put me on the stage. Nonsense. Stephen remained here serving tables, but the anointing was too much for tables. You are going to pray. Listen, there are many of us you cannot delay gratification. You want to buy the shoe now. You want to buy everything now. 
you see people standing and you say, I must buy this kind of shoe. I must buy this kind of watch. Oh, glory. The word is working. You better keep quiet and pray. Prepare for the season. Read the books. Read books on fatherhood. Read books on leadership. Read books on ministry. Sharpen yourself. When you are tired and it's 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock, time to pray. When you are tired, remember your destiny. Drag yourself up. I'm tired. It's true that I'm tired. For the sake of my destiny. For the sake of my destiny. I do it to correct the error of the I do it to correct the limitation of my Hallelujah. 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 Listen. Anytime you see a nice jeep, go and get a book and read. That's how to that's how to claim it. After you speak and say in the name of Jesus, but prepare, knowing that there is something you can have that will bring it to you. A day will come. When God permits us and we start translating koinonia messages to books, I tell you some of them will be bestsellers. But until that time comes, let's keep preaching the cutting edge messages. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we're done. Listen. Immediately we play these two prayer points. There are people here who need to surrender totally to Jesus. The moment we pray those two prayer points, as we round up the last one, I just want you to come out here quickly. Because this is serious business. I don't need to cajole you. You need to surrender your heart. That you want to say, Lord, fully everything. So make sure when that time comes, we're going to pray. We're going to pray these prayer points. Hallelujah. And you're going to say, Lord, all the resources, all the materials, all the components I need to expose myself to in preparation for that season, bring them to me. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and pray. All the training, all the food, all the papers. All the different schools, all the fashion schools, all the business schools, all the business schools, all the ministry training, all the degrees you need to test. All the qualifications, all the leadership grace that you need for this so sister, rather than praying and say, there's no husband, why don't you sharpen yourself and say the man that talks to me will know he spoke to a treasure. When you are going around doing all kinds of nonsense, there's no man coming. This koinonia brother said they are not seen. Why don't you sharpen yourself? Brothers, rather than sitting now, all these ladies don't like me. Are you serious? What are you doing for your future? 
Show me the investment you are making to be an extraordinary man. Last prayer point. Lord Jesus, hold my hands in this destiny and take me until I become great. Hold oh, my hand. Hold my hand. Hold my hand. Through the rain. Through the storm. Lord, I want to give up. Encourage me. When the voice of death is too much, let me hear the voice of the Spirit. Hold my hand. The hand of the Lord, that we can That same hand, that Hold my hand. Hold my hand. When I'm almost giving up, hold my hand. When I'm almost falling, hold my hand. When it looks like the world, hold my hand. When I'm about to give up on destiny, hold my hand. When the husband is not coming, hold my hand. When the job is not coming, hold my hand. When the miracle seems to be delayed, hold my hand. Hallelujah. You can choose to remain at the level you are forever by giving excuses. Or you can take the hand of God and say, Lord, I'm on your side. I don't care what men say. Let them criticize me. I'll still be moving. I don't care what they may misunderstand me. Why are you always praying in tongues like a fool? No problem. Is it only books you will keep reading? Don't you visit friends? No problem. When the season of appearing comes, the brothers of Joseph that looked down on him, they were the ones who now came. Joseph said, I saw the sun. I saw the moon. I saw 11 stars bowing to me. Those who criticize you, they will bow. It's only a matter of time. Hallelujah. I bring a word of hope to somebody. The issue in your life right now does not come to kill you. It is the making of great men. There is no money in your pocket. Some of you have been preached to think that it's because you don't have faith. It's because you have faith. Every time you pray for the throne, a Goliath comes. When you see a Goliath, don't cry, start smiling. That's a sign that a new season is before you. The presence of an enemy always ends your current season and opens up a new season for you. If there are no enemies in your life, I'm afraid of you. May your life not be so ordinary that your enemies ignore you. You will remember this day. A day will come when you look at this picture today. Tears will roll from your eyes. Because you will see that in a short time, God has glorified himself in your life. And you will be wondering, was it this easy? And I was almost missing it. The songwriter says, I was right at the edge of the breakthrough. Can I tell you something? I sense in my spirit that the clock is getting close to someone's life. I, I mean it from the depths of my heart. As a house, I know that we are about entering a season. I've been announcing this for months. God will not do anything in this house and not reveal it to me. I'm like a pregnant woman. That's why I stay in the secret. Like the wise men looking at the stars, trying to understand what are you saying. Because a season will be better. 
and we will only see and wonder and say, Lord, was it this far? Hallelujah. We'll take one more prayer point. But let's allow those who are saying, Lord, I'm not going to lie to myself tonight. I need you in my life. Please, I want you to rush out here quickly. Do it from the depths of your heart. Whether you are outside or inside, please, welcome. You are welcome. This is for the sake of your destiny. Mean it from the depths of your heart. Enough is enough. Run to Jesus. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Nobody is closing his eyes. You don't close your eyes when they are giving you a gift. There are still people outside. Jesus is talking to you. And saying, this is why I brought you for this meeting. You wanted to come, but the devil kept stopping you. But tonight is your night. You can go back. Nobody will talk to you, but you are the one who knows that your destiny needs to change. Don't let the proclamations of your enemies be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Run to Jesus, young and old. Those of us standing, stretch your hands towards them and begin to pray. Those in front, talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Say, Lord, I mean business with you. I'm not being emotional because of a message. I have seen that my destiny is in my hands. I make up my mind. I congratulate those of you in front. No man condemns you. Condemnation does not come from God. He convicts you like he has done. I don't care what you have done. I don't care where you are. Jesus is about to give you a new beginning. We believe in you and we believe in your destiny. Every one of us had to make this decision. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Make it a genuine decision. Now lift your right hand and say after me from the depths of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I confess that you are my Savior and you are my Lord. Today, I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I'm a child of God. Satan, Stay out of my life. Jesus, I acknowledge you as the Lord of my life. Let the peace of God flood into my heart right now. I denounce sin. I denounce Satan. From today, my life begins to move upward only. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now let me pray for you. Jesus, these ones have come because they love you. We salute their courage and as a family of faith, we receive them with gladness. And Lord, I know that among these ones, there are apostles and prophets and businessmen and leaders and world changers. Lord, I pray that in this season, you begin to lead them through dealing. Begin to bring them to the knowledge of the principles of the kingdom. Holy Spirit, you are our master mentor. We commend these ones to your life. Let them experience it truly. The Zoe life. That God life. In the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you with the blessings of heaven. Everything that you came here with. That is not of God. Drops here tonight and never returns with you. In the name of Jesus. You will be transformed and changed for real. And you will never. I break associations that are ungodly that keep you in sin and iniquity. I pray in the name of Jesus that your change and transformation will be genuine. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Koinonia, celebrate them. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Hallelujah. Now listen, just do something for me very quickly. I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. We'll have your details. We'll be praying for you. And then we'll have a word with you. God bless you. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Please keep standing. Just give me a few minutes and then we'll release the blessings on you. 
Hallelujah. Please use this week. Hallelujah. Jordan's books. 